John is in Stockport. John, good morning. What would you like to say? Oh, I totally disagree, Ollie. I, I think I, they, they should. They, they can go as litigant. They can be litigant in person, and they can represent themselves, right? Oh, uh, really? Not taxpayers' money. Okay. Not taxpayers' money. Go on. Why? And why also, do you think? Why do you think they shouldn't have legal representation then? Do you know what? If you just saw the shooting out in Russia, right? Yep. Yeah, Four yeah. of them gun, gun people down, kill people, burnt, you know, set the place alight. You know, right? They're so cowardly, they didn't even kill themselves. That, you know, the police or whatever, so according to Russia, they've arrested them. But, you know, you know, when you're doing, you know, it's on cameras and whatever, and they've arrested people. But what I'm saying is, you know, it's all this mother cuddle. You know, like, you know, you, you, you know, what upsets me about this country is that we... You know, we had the IRA, right? Bombings with the IRA. Mm -hmm. And they killed so many people. And, and then they got amnesty to walk away. You know, like, you know, um, they've been given an am am amnesty. It, it, cut both way it cut both ways, though, John, wasn't it? It wasn't, it wasn't just yeah, okay, okay. But let's the say, IRA. Let's, 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 let's say the terrorism, whatever, whatever. But the thing is, if I don't agree with you and I don't like you, Ollie, mm. right? And you, I you, call, you, and call, you call me up on the radio. You don't come down and shoot me, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. You, you know, this is what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is, you know, you, 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 you know, this country is supposed to be a Christian country. But, you know, right all this. But, you know, if, 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 if someone's going to prison for life, like the, like the guy who, who, who killed, who killed um, Sarah Everard, yeah, the police mm. officer. Yeah, right? Wayne Cousins, yeah. Right, right. Now, he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life, yeah? Do you know how much that's costing the taxpayers, yeah? But I say put a bullet in his head, yeah, Ooh, and be done okay. with it. Okay, here we go. Right? Because, this because, is this no, is a because, pretty uh, radical no, departure. Ollie. This is a pretty radical no, departure, Ollie. though, John. Ollie. I've, you've Ollie, been hold on. Okay, I'll give you another couple of seconds, mate, and then I am going to have to reply right. to you. You've been talking a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Ollie, so Ollie, right? So like Guantanamo Bay, right? People right for terrorists were put in Guantanamo Bay. And then the army and souls like beat them and yep. abused them and whatever, right? You support you and, support and that. There's a, no, there's a big no. I'm not saying it was like but I'm not saying it's like but I was saying there was an outcry, yeah. But yep. when you've got when you've got terrorists putting planes into you know thing, and if, if all they're going to get if they get caught, right, is is go to jail for the rest of their lives. John, did you have a and, problem? So just to be clear, do you have a problem with the treatment that these people received in Guantanamo Bay? No, I don't at all. No. Right, okay. So you're advocating for, for torture? No, well, hold on. Let me explain something. If you go to the buy and you get caught stealing, they chop your hands off in Chop Chop Square. Is that, is that a good thing? Well, you know what, Ollie, right? If you go to Dubai, you can leave your wallet, your phone, you can leave it on the wall, you could come back an hour later and it'll still be there. No one will touch it. John, I think John, I think I'm going to have to get you to stay on the line. I think we've, we've got we've got some things we need to explore over the course uh, of the next of the next sort of five or ten minutes. We do have John in Stockport on the line, and John, before we we got to the news, well, you, you, you said a lot of things. Uh, to be honest with you. you, you said you support capital punishment. You said you support um, the sort of the activity that went on at Guantanamo Bay. For those not familiar. That's extraordinary rendition. So um, kidnapping people in different countries, flying them to Guantanamo Bay, and then subjecting them to things like um, force feeding, waterboarding, uh, prolonged exposure, and I mean for sort of 24, 36, 48 hours to sort of um, music that's as loud as a, as, a, as a Boeing 747 taking off, holding them in stress positions. So torture. Um, you support those things. Yeah, but look, Ollie, right, because I tell you why, Ollie, right, when people realise there's no consequences for their actions, yeah, whatever, and why should the, why should the taxpayer pay to keep people in prison for the rest of their lives? They're never going to come out. They get mother-cuddled in there. They get to watch telly. They get to breathe. Their victims aren't breathing. Sarah Everard is not coming out of the grave, is she? No, she's, she's not. She's not. Her parents and her family members are never going to... Right? And the only thing they need to do is put a bullet in there, save the taxpayers the money, right? Because if people know that it's a death sentence, I reckon if we had a debate now, if we had a, a vote for the capital punishment for people like Wayne Cousins and people like... Um, yeah, my, uh, John. And these people John, that are in there. John, when I tell you that in the United States oh. of America, the states that have the death penalty have higher rates of violent crime than those that don't, that would indicate that the death penalty does not serve as a deterrent. Right. So I'm not saying it's a deterrent. What I'm saying is not a deterrent. But what I'm saying is, all right, right. So we're killing well, people I, to I, save costs. I, no, 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 no. 
We're not, we're, 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 we're not, we're, we're, this is the argument people keep saying. We're not living in the, in the, in the 1800s, 1900s, whatever, right, where people were hung. They've got enough evidence, proof. They've got CSI. They've got, they, they've got all the forensics. They've got the proof. You know, they've got evidence beyond, but this beyond. Is, but this is the point, though, isn't it, John? Uh, Hang on. We can't be sure. And actually, I would say, by the way, if you think that if you think that people shouldn't get legal representation, it's only going to increase the frequency with which we, we convict people of crimes wrongly but because like they haven't been able said, to mount like proper defences. Said, yeah, but Ollie, like I said when I rang to speak to the guy who answers the phone there, right? You our producer, said as well, yeah. These people do not recognise our law or our country. They do not they do not abide by they want to abide by Sharia law and what have you, and they John, don't. John, you, you were just you were just advocating for Sharia law before we went to the news. No, you said you no, support. Said, you said you supported people having their hands chopped off for stealing things. No, yeah, but I'm saying yeah, but I'm saying yeah because they they that's what they're, 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 now you're not going to be so stealing yes, you are. again, are so, you? I th you? You're not going to be stealing again, are you? But, uh, you're not going to be I stealing again. I, I, the, the cognitive dissonance is operating so quickly, I'm struggling to keep track of it. If I chop off your hands, you ain't going to be stealing nothing but I again, thought you, you? But I thought you just said you had a problem with people who support no, Sharia law. Is, uh, yeah, but what I'm saying is, when it, with, the, with the terrorists... I mean, right, they don't, they don't... They what are, don't what are to... you saying? Just try, and, just try and say it slowly for me, Ayatollah John. Right. So, 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 the problem is, yeah, even, even the small things, but like... Like the police force, okay, uh, institutionally racist, whatever, you know, they're getting bashed. There's a lot of good police officers out there, yeah? Yeah, right? there are, yeah. And there's, right, without them, right, we wouldn't be able to be sleeping safely at night because, you know, they go out, they got that terrorist at London Bridge, right, and they did the right thing, shot him dead, shoot to kill. Right, they had a policy, I think, with IRA. John, it's, sli to, it's slightly because, different, though, isn't it? If someone is sort of charging around stabbing people and, and yeah, it poses an immediate yeah, threat to other people's safety, that is a different yeah, question. That's a very so, different so, question so, to the state safely so, containing someone and then putting them somewhere and killing them. That's a very different thing. No, 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 no. no. What I'm saying is the taxpayer, right, right, they're saying the prisons are full up, they're saying there's no rooms in there, whatever, right, they're, they're paying hundreds of thousands of pounds a year to right. keep these people in prison. So just to be clear, right. we've now boiled it down, we've boiled it down, and you're an advocate for the death penalty on yes, the basis of cost saving. No, it's not about cost saving. But you said I'm there are too many is, people in prison and it costs us too much. No, they, they're saying, no, but I'm saying the, the cost, if someone's getting and a life sentence... we know that it's not a deterrent. And if someone's getting a life sentence, yeah, mm. right, and we're letting them die behind in, in the bars, right, and you're feeding them and watering them. Now, listen to me carefully. That is no, that right. You can't even go and get assisted suicide, right? You can't even get assisted suicide, yeah. But that is assisted suicide because you know they're going to die in prison anyway. So what are you feeding them for? And drink, giving them to drink. You know, this is just so we, we shouldn't you know, we shouldn't feed prisoners. Is that is that what we're up to? No, I'm saying no. I, I didn't say. That. I said put a bullet in their heads, not feed them at all, <laughs> because. You, I, I, think, you, I think we're going to draw a line under things there, John. I think I think we're, we're getting we're stretching the limits even of my patience and and, and credulity uh, over the course of this conversation. A few, a few little bits of um, a bit of housekeeping. Uh, in November 2020, actually, the UAE overhauled its legal system um, to changes, including lowering restrictions on alcohol consumption, permitted cohabitation, eliminated lower sentence for lower sentences for honour killings, and removed corporal punishment as a legal form of punishment in its penal code. Uh, so, I, I, to, I, to be honest, I was sceptical when John told me that there was a place called Chop Chop Square in Dubai. I didn't think that was, um, was likely. Um, but it turns out they don't do that anymore. Uh, and then I'd add as well uh, to uh, the point about how how it's much easier to just execute someone uh, than 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 do anything else. Um, according to the Death Penalty Information Centre, the average time on death row in 2020 is 227 months, which is over 18 years. So you're already keeping someone in prison for an extraordinary period of time um, before you even get round to the act of killing them. Not to mention the case, the fact of cases like Andrew Malkinson, who spent close to that period of time uh, behind bars and, and was wrongfully convicted. We get it wrong. We get it wrong all the time. And fortunately, in the case of Malkinson, it means that we can take him out of prison. We can, I mean, what on earth do you do? Apologise? I'm not sure that'll cut the mustard. 
I suspect there's probably going to be a pretty hum, um, pretty pretty lumpy compensation payout as well as a result. You can't resurrect someone from the dead, as John pointed out. You can't resurrect someone from the dead. And if you decide to execute someone, what happens after? I would say um, we're trying to we're trying to discuss whether people are entitled to legal representation. We covered quite a lot of ground over the course of the last call. John in Blackpool, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I think I think it doesn't make no difference. Uh, I, I think at the end of the day, we've had fourteen years of it, and until we start, uh, personally, unless it, it, unless they start selling manifestos and put them in law, I don't think that, there's a lot of people that have got. Uh, you won't believe what you know. You won't believe what they say no more because it's like having a, a bad car, isn't it? And having a different salesman, it's still the same old, same old. So no, I think it's just. Uh, they're just desperate, and I, I think they should have an election because uh, they can't make it. They can't, they can't make any any any, any uh, policies now. We only maximum them for six months left. So no, I think they're, they're, they're definitely toast. John, definitely. is there is there anything that could convince you to to vote no. for them? The only thing, me personally, the only thing if I had a, if you just said you just saying about a Lee Anderson or a Farage. Someone who could convince me is what they say, what you get on the tin, and that's what I believe in. Someone like Parage and Leanderson, I have a lot of respect for, because at least, at least, I mean, they might not be 100% true, but at the end of the day, uh, I'd have a, they've got a little bit of backbone and prepared to say things, but other than them two, I think the rest of them, they're just the same old, you know, Cameron, him, and then... And then and then you had Teresa May, and it just all you tried to do was just wheel somebody out and take us all for monks. Mm. So w- when you say that Lee Anderson, someone that you respect, who has a bit of a backbone, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and says what he thinks, when when you look at the yeah. fact that he started in the Labour Party, defected to the Tory Party, and then most recently has defected to Reform, that would mm. that would appear to me to be someone who actually doesn't know what he thinks uh, and doesn't have. A backbone and is quite opportunistic and is prepared to to sort of sit wherever he needs to. Well, yeah, all right. Look, they're all opportunistic. Is it? I'm not saying he's perfect. Okay. But what I'm saying is, he's gone from one party and obviously it was a minor, and then he's jumped to conservatives. So sort of like what I believed him. And because he's he's made a few views, they kicked him out of there. So now he's jumped to reform. He won't be the only one. But what I'm saying is, he's not perfect. I'm not saying he's is the Messiah? Well, what I'm saying he's is, just I a very he's, naughty he's boy. The best of the best bunch. Yeah. Uh, what is it you like? What is it you like about him, though? Like, wh- give me, give me the case. Like, well, make, make the Farage, case for me. I mean, what do well, you like about Lee Nigel Farage? And Farage? I absolutely. I mean, Farage. I, I mean, I'd vote for him tomorrow. Me personally. What what part of um, what part of his political agenda resonates with you? Because at the end of the day, it, 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 you can just tell with the likes of the likes of. Farage and 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 probably then you you sort of like get what you see on the tin, uh, even though they're not hundred percent. I don't hundred percent believe it. I'm not like I said to you before. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a fool. I mean, they're all politicians at the end of the day. Was but I I I, I, Penny I, I Morgan might be extrapolating and, Cameron and all the rest of them yeah. now. Okay, I might be extrapolating a bit here, John, but I suspect there's there's probably a Brexit theme to to what you're saying, talking about Nigel and uh, and Lee. So I wonder. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, well, I do believe in Brexit. I mean, Boris, he, he told us lies, didn't he? He'd come along and said, get Brexit. He, he, he got the, the North vote because he said, get Brexit, don't control the borders. He's not controlled the borders. He's got in, he's lied. He's got him and his mates, and as soon as he got Brexit half done, it was an half baked potato at the end of the day. He, he, he sort of like got in on the back of Brexit and never did it anyway. So do he's think, finished and all. Do you think? Do you think Brexit was sort of what you expected to be? You know what you said about sort of you know what you see is what you get. Was was the Brexit that you, that you, we have now? Was that kind of what you were expecting? No, what I don't know. I didn't want. If, if, if I had it my way, when you said control the borders, it means just allow people make it very hard to get into the country, and people who legitimately can come here. And be proper asylum seekers and things like that. Definitely, you know what I mean. Or do it legally. Not this. But an absolute laughing stock of the planet. I mean, these countries must be on, on, on must be belly aching us. 
It really must be. John, when, John, John when, you, when you look at something like the Dublin Agreement, which allowed us, when we were in the EU, to return people that crossed the Channel back to France, and now that we've left, we don't have that anymore, um, is, is that the sort of thing that you're expecting to, to no longer take place? I mean, that, that, that would be a way to kind of address the problem you're talking about, wouldn't it? Well, all, all I want to do is people to come over here, come through, and like we all have to do, in a legal way, apply, come over, set up ports, whatever you have to do, and come in a legal way. I mean, even the Irish are going absolutely crazy because, the, the, you know, the way people are just coming in through the back door, left door, right door, lorries, you know, they're coming from the grids, they're coming from everywhere, and it's, it's, it's completely out of control. But, like I said, uh, I think the Tories, I mean, you'd least expect it of the Tories, and they're absolutely made an act, you know, they made an act carnage of it. So, right, you know? who, who will you vote for, John? Me, personally, at the moment, um, I mean, I think Labour will definitely win it, 100%. But me, personally, I'm going to stick the roof on. I'm, because, all I, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm nearly 60 now, and, I, and I've, I've, I've voted all my life, and I've voted Labour all my life, and and at the end of the day, it's just... I think the both of them are a waste of time, for the truth. But, I mean, I'd rather have Labour in than to tour, let's put it that way. When did but you, swi- when did you switch, John? When did you switch? Was it 2019, or will this be the first time? First time. First time. That's interesting. Yeah. What is it that you like about reform? Well, you've got to give them, a, you've got to give them an hearing, haven't you? You really have got to give them an area because, I mean, you've got... The Tories are all a complete waste of time and you've got Labour who go too far to the... Labour will be all right, but it's too far to the left. And well, you're even gonna now? Get identity, what you're going to get is identity politics for the next five years. I can... I, I, honestly, Ola, you're going to get identity... John, you, I've got to be I, honest. The, the, thing, the, years, the, yeah. thing, the things you've the things you've been saying about um, sort of foreigners and, and immigrants, that sounds quite a lot to, lot to me like identity politics. No, I didn't say, I mean, you know, you don't know what a man, you don't know what a woman is, uh, be, you know, he, she, it be all the woke stuff. That's what you're going to get out of Labour, and that's what puts me off then. What if there was a normal Labour party, like it was in the 70s, yeah. you know, if there was a normal, traditional, working class Labour party, right. like there was, yeah. what, what you've got at the moment is just a load of wokers, and that's what puts me off them. You genuinely think the Labour party's woke? Yes. Do you? Yeah, 100%. What is 100%. it? 100%. When, when you look at... OK, so let's put it like this. Unless you... Well, maybe you, maybe you do think the Conservative Party is also woke, but when you look at Keir Starmer saying that he's going to admit, ad- adhere to the government's fiscal rules for the f- first two years of of, his, of a Labour government, when you look at the fact that he's not considering overruling or overturning or ch- amending the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Act or the Covert Human Intelligence Sources Act or the Overseas Operations Act, all of which are quite... It's got to be said, draconian, authoritarian, and conservative pieces of legislation. When you when you look at the fact that the Conservative Party has lifted it most recently in the budget, two of the Labour Party's policies. I mean, there's there's clearly a bit of uh, coalescence between those two main parties. They're 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 borrowing from each other. They're they're, they're mirroring each other quite closely. So, yeah. Do you think the yeah, Conservatives the is, are the, the Conservatives woke as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, them as well. They're, 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 not, I'm, I'm, they're, 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 they're just, like I said, they're both as bad as each other because it's like when you hear it today, it's all what she said, it's all this racism thing. And I mean, the last few weeks on the news, it's all the racism rows and all that. People want to talk about bread and butter things. Do you want to talk about bills? Do you want to talk about crime? Do you want to talk about. This is what they want to talk about. All they talk about is that she said and he said. And the stammer. I mean, he he, he, t- he said seven things to seven different people. The other a Labour yeah. MP in the other day, you know what he did, all right? He changes his accents depending where he is, mm. and that's the fact. I heard that the other day. Can, so, like the, can I just can I just uh, uh, two two more questions for you, John? Before I let you go, and we get yeah. to the, and we get yeah. to the news. First of all, is basically everyone who isn't Lee Anderson or Nigel Farage woke? Is that kind of where we're up to as a as a sort of position, right? The Tories and, and Labour. Are are both woke? So I just ask you to tell me what woke means. Well, woke. I would say woke is is basically it's all political correctness. You don't know what a woman is, right? That's woke. I mean, Starmer cannot cannot say what a woman is. I mean, when he got asked that question on your show, and he said, "What is a woman?" He should have said, "A woman is like my mum." 
That's what he should have said. That's a woman. But what did he do? He couldn't answer because he didn't know whether to go to the left or go to the right. And that's what puts people off. That is woke. Right. So, so acknowledging the fact that decades of feminist study have argued for an extensively long time that a woman amounts to far more than her genitalia. Oh, it's a load of rubbish. A woman right. is a woman, a man is a man. End of. Full stop. And end of errand. It's very, it's very simple when, 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 you, when you put it in a, in, a, in a sentence like that, isn't it, John? Uh, it's, it's, I'd probably wager it's a little bit reductive. Shahid's in Labrook Grove. Shahid, what would you like to say this morning? Hello, good morning, Ollie. How are you doing? You all right? Morning. I'm good, my friend. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Thank you for having me on the show. A pleasure. Um, basically, what it is, is regarding the football top and them changing the... Um, St. George's Cross, the colours on the St. George's Cross, to be honest. First and foremost, the cross represents England, the cross represents religion as well. Like, the Ooh, cross played a go. big part during the Crusades, you know, when the Europeans, when the French, the the, uh, the Germans, when Europe went, you know, into Middle East. Yeah, when, we, when we waged a holy war on the on on the Middle East and the Muslims there and, and, inv- and invaded. Yeah, exactly. Just uh, well, I won't go into it too much, but what I'm saying is, when people saw that, they knew that there were Christians coming, right or not? Uh, I think in medieval times, yeah, I think that's that's yeah, fair. Yeah, exactly. And the cross represented christianity and people who followed that religion the religion of christianity basically you know what i'm going to um, ask you shahid yes go ahead please can christians not be bisexual What's... no not at all who said that like you know in, in listen to be honest why um i'm not homophobic at all but what i what, the point that i'm trying to cross uh, uh point across is that in christianity it, it is said that homosexuality sodomy is forbidden it's a sin okay and to be honest <sighs> right and so are we all gonna are we all gonna walk is, around in hessian sacks are we all going no, to cover no, no, our no, no, not no, cover our neighbors Oli. oxes you can't interpret these religious texts literally no, no, i know i'm but i'm just i'm i'm trying to put the cross and that to get like i'm trying to put something across i'm not being ignorant and i I know where you're coming from. I don't. Th- I I'll, be, I'll be honest. With you, I don't think you sound ignorant. You sound. You sound. You sound quite 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 well thought out on this. But I. I, I just. No, wh- I'd like you to explain what it is. What no, what, what is the Christian because, thing? What's the connection with Christianity? What's the point you're trying to make? The connection with Christianity is the cross. The cross. The 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 subject here we're talking about is the cross being in the colours of the LGBTQ, and the cross represents Christianity. Does it or does it not? Uh, I think it probably represents England now more so than it represents Christianity. I'll have to. I've got to be honest on that point. Okay. Well, but if well, let's say well, it, let's say it does, we, Shahid. Let's we'll say it does. Let's say it does. Okay. Fine. Let's. Okay. Well, let's let's park that for a second, and okay, I te- we'll, and I'll we'll accept your point, point and I'll accept your point okay. and say it represents Christianity. So okay, what is the problem? It does, what's the problem with adjusting like you it? Just mentioned it represents England as well. Mm. And what's the problem with adjusting it in the way that they have then, if it does represent Christianity? Well, uh, to be honest, it's just, out of all the things they could have adjusted, they chose the the cross to adjust. But the thing is, that's to do with religion, you know? Well, it, well, uh, well once upon a time it did. Nowadays, as you've just mentioned, there are, there are going to be many other people that are going to think like you and say, no, it represents England more nowadays than anything else, which I believe, so yes, it does. So if they, if they turn the three lines into, into rainbow shades, you know, each, each one a different colour, would you be all right with no, that? No, but then that, that doesn't affect those people who are, like, who are more religious and think, uh, you know, it'd be less of an argument if you understand what I'm saying. But, uh, Shahid, if, if, you're, if you're religious and bigoted, you're still bigoted. Yes, but then you have to remember that the cross represents a religion that forbids, you know, the LGBT community. It doesn't, it doesn't forbid the LGBT community. If you, if you, if you interpret well, the mean, Bible actually, literally, you know if, in. you in, if, you in, if you interpret the Bible literally, then I suppose you, you can make that argument. You would, however, then be a fundamentalist, wouldn't you? And, and in actual fact, the no, Church, the no, church no, of England, Ollie, no, the church no, of England no, has recently changed no, its position look, on this to extend blessings to same-sex marriages. Okay. okay, sure. 
Okay, let's put religion aside for a second, okay? Just for one second. Okay. All right? And let's go back to the cross and the colours. Yeah. For another argument is, what about those people who do not agree with, you know, the LGBTQ and homosexuality, and they're putting up their hard and money to wear something mm. and have a symbol of, of the LGBTQ, which they... I've got, to, I've got to be honest, Shahid, I, d- I don't have much sympathy for those people. No? No, I don't. If, 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 if we're getting to the line of argument because where we're no, saying that homophobes won't want to wear you... the England shirt because it has, it has a degree of bisexual representation on it, I say, well, sorry, lads, but th- this one isn't for you. This, Eng- this England team is about something more than that. This England team is about the diversity of this country and, and, and right. how that feeds into us and our strength. I, I, I get so fed up, and I'm not saying no. you're making this argument, but I get so fed up with people that, that, are, that believe their, their, their patriotism and their national identity to be something that is threatened, threatened by the idea that there is a, a bisexual flag on the England kit, threatened by the idea that having a couple of 10,000 people cross the English Channel in small boats somehow threatens the very nature of Englishness. My patriotism is not that brittle. My patriotism is stronger than that, and I think that people that are different contribute meaningfully to this country, and it is one of the things that is the best about us. Adams in St Albans. Adam, what would you like to say? Yeah, hi, Ali. Good morning, and uh, you take a very fresh very good debatable uh, moments with you every Sunday. I think you're marvellous. appreciate I that. Thank very, you, mate. I have a very, very simple answer for the death penalty, mm. which may be uh, something for your ears. Um, when the judge gives out sentencing, when found guilty or has gone fully through this on a whole life sentence from there, they could give the option for the actual prisoner to take his own life in terms of a self-suicide suicide that he wishes to take. Oh, now, this would only... Here we go. Only, hold on. It would only tie in that the week before, he could have been a suicide bomber that's been found with his backpack, chest pack and explosives not to go off. He had intent to take his own life. Now, obviously on this, it may be quite novel what I say uh, on this way, but it may be a way out, and then people would have their pound of flesh if the guy took his own life in an assisted way, not dying in a Swiss, uh, a Swiss clinic, yeah, but yeah. somewhere that he took a, a simple draft and then slept and, and, and ended his life. This, this is a real sort of um, Bushido code samurai committing seppuku, or that's probably slightly too noble. I think, uh, no, I'll tell you a, a better comparison, actually. I've got a better comparison. I think it's kind of like the... Um, you know the sort of um, the 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 Nazi way, right? Of they found, when they found informers or collaborators or whoever, and sort of go in and put the revolver and the bottle of whiskey on the table, and you know the inference being, look, you can do this yourself, or we're going to do it. So you know, make a choice. I, I, I can think of one better one, and I hope everyone who's seen this film can concur with me. Shawshank Redemption, great film. Remember the prison. Oh, not the prison officer, the actual main guy, the actual main manager of the, of, the, of, the, of the thing. He pulls the gun out when all the sirens are coming, when he opens the book at the end of the story with him, when he's got all of it, and he's bang to rights, he opens the book and shoots himself. Mm. It's an interesting moral dilemma, and it's one I hadn't actually fully considered before, Adam. I hope that helps. Well, well, I, 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 whether or not it helps, I'm not entirely sure. But I do enjoy, I do enjoy moral dilemmas of you know whether it's um, you know uh, de- debating paradoxes like the prisoner's dilemma or you know the, the classic one is the tra- is the train tracks right where there's the train coming down the tracks and you can pull the lever to change it and not strapped to one side of five people strapped to another or a hundred whichever one it is you're going to kill someone. So what do you do? Do you do you take the um, do you do you intervene and therefore assume personal responsibility to kill less people, but you have nonetheless now killed someone yourself, or do you let it pass by and uh, you know possibly absolve yourself of responsibility, but many more people die? I, I enjoy thought experiments like that. I think it is probably. Uh, I think I think you would. Uh, here's the difficulty with doing that for me now that now that I've bought myself a little bit of time and thought about it with that with that, you had. with that <laughs> with that spiel, and it's that. In that moment, if you have just 
convicted someone for possibly for life, if you've just imposed a whole life order on that person, they are probably at the lowest point in their life. And I would think that putting something, it might not be as as, as blunt force as the revolver on the table in front of them, but let's say, uh, you know, something much more peaceful like uh, a poison or, or whatever, that's a very su- uh, suggestive thing to a person who is probably at their most suggestible moment. And I wonder if 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 that individual, again, I know I, I put it to one of the callers earlier, right? That, and I know it's slightly ridiculous to say, would they regret it? Well, you can't regret anything when you're six feet in the ground. But, you know, let's just say that that person still had a degree of consciousness. I, I wonder if they would regret that decision in, in the years to come um, that, they had, that they had taken their life in that manner. To counter that, sir, you cannot say someone who's got a suicide vest somewhere in the Manchester bombings or anything of going out of that sort of nature hadn't got any lower than that. They were about to blow themselves up before. They mm. do have an option. I feel, I think you may be wrong on that. Yeah, right? I, I, yeah I, guess, I guess that's... Um if we're talking about someone who is specifically going to conduct a suicide bombing, then it then it then it's a point of difference, isn't it? Um, I suppose the if we're if we're staying within the confines of your thought experiment, then we're probably then we're probably um, if we're talking about someone who's who's facing justice, then they haven't successfully um, blown themselves up, and therefore we don't know if they were actually going to. People do um, have sort of Damascene conversions, don't they, and regret it, but nonetheless. Um, uh, a worthy and different uh, thought experiment. I will always, I'll always take them, la- ladies and gentlemen. By the way, if you're listening, and 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 by the way, I was pulled up on this recently. Actually, someone messaged me to say, "You always say, ladies and gentlemen, what about us non-binary folk?" Well, my NBs as well are included uh, when I say that. Matt is in Birmingham. Matt, good morning. Should we torture terrorists? Um, if uh, it's a it's a it's a good it's a good conversation. I think what you brought up there. Um, let me just start by um, putting into context. Um, yes, the terrorists. It, what they've done were, was bad. But have you, have you got family yourself? I do. Uh, yeah. Like kids. you've got kids, have you? Uh, no, I don't. But I have close family. Yeah. Have you got a wife? Yes. Yeah, you've got a wife. So taking take into context, you're you're walking down the street one night, you've gone out for a meal. Uh, someone attacks your wife. Now that you're, you're saying any form of harm to anyone is a form of terrorism, so that person, um, you know, uh, they've put, um, they've attacked your wife. Um, would what would you do in that circumstance? What would I do, or would I, what would I like to happen, or what, what should would you happen? Like to do? What would you do? What 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 would you do? Would you be spineless and do nothing? Because let's let, let's just be honest. You would be spineless if you if you wouldn't have any thoughts of wanting to do something to that person or to them to them people. Mm. And if you've got kids, so the people in that um, concert hall, they've got kids or the parents of kids who are in there. Um, so if you didn't if you didn't have any thought or inkling of wanting to do something, you're spineless. No, you I think what I would what I would. What should happen is that that person should go to prison for a very long time. Uh, why, what, waste, what, why waste funds on someone who's never ever going to be, you know, fixed mentally, who's always going to have that thought process, and they will if they, if they are the terrorists, if they are, if they if they're not just someone that Russia have just picked up off out, out of a prison or off the street, if they are the terrorists, their, their minds will never ever be changed. So why, why not? terrorise them, get some answers, and just do, do away with them. Well, I yeah, think not- I think the thing is, Matt, is that, you know, in that moment, particularly if you're, you're present and you're there, I think there is a base sort of emotional, um, personal response, which you, I think very few people would be able to override, right? That doesn't necessarily mean that that reaction is the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's not the right thing to do. It isn't, you know, because all humans should be treated with respect. Mm. But when when you've got a select few in the world who have got no morals, and they will that they will go ahead and they would take your child or your mother or your wife or your husband, and they would inflict harm on them without even thinking about it. I'm sorry that yeah, like a lot of callers and texters and messages have said they've lost the right. So, um, so Matt, I, let's 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 flip it on on you then. Um, you yeah. you you have a you've got a you've got a child. Yes. And if anything was to happen to them, 
you'd be happy for that person to be tortured. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I would happily. I would happily do it myself if, if I say so the worst comes to the worst. Where, where, when my daughter's older, mm. then yes, I would happily, I, I would castrate at the, uh, at the barn happily. Okay, and and if your daughter was to commit a terrible act, would you be okay with her being tortured? Well, uh, yeah, that, that's the uh, <laughs> yeah. You got you caught me out on that one, but because at the end of the day, she she's my daughter. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a hard one, Ollie. It is a hard one. But but she's, the she's day, just a person you, too, have, though, isn't she? You've got to have somewhere in your mind. You've got to have somewhere in your mind that is okay with a certain amount of pain being given to people like them. There's got to be somewhere in your mind where that says, actually, no, it's okay. Yeah, I'm against it, but in certain circumstances... It's okay. You've got. You, there's got to be some some side of your brain that actually. Well, I think the thing is for for me, Matt. I think that the my threshold for that is the pain, the psychological suffering of of imprisonment. Right? Like, I th- I think that is punishment enough. I think that's where I'm. That's where my is limit it, gets because to. Because you look at the prisons in this country. So, if it was someone in this country, look, it, 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 you've heard of all the reports and that of. You know, um, some people find it hard, but majority of people are like, it's, it's like a holiday camp. You know, there's not really any... Are we re- do we read the same reports about prisons? Rampant overcrowding. Well, okay, yeah. Horrible there, hygiene. There, there is my, my brother, Violence. My, my, I, I've never been to prison, but my brothers have. Oh, really? Um, but, but, but my brother was one uh, in Winston Green uh, when the big riot kicked off, and he, he, he took his own life because... Oh, gosh. The, because he didn't, uh, he didn't have the right care and that, and he had people on his back. He did. Oh, I'm sorry, that's mate. Another sto- that's another story for another. No, no, no. I'm, I'm all right about it now. Um, but, okay. Um, he, he he come out, and my other brother used to come out, and they they, they always say, yeah, it is a it's a walk in the park. It just all all depends on what probably type pretty of person you pretty are. pretty tough guys. Do you, do you, uh, I'm conscious. I don't want to sort of um, you know, get into the, the nature of 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 your brother that that died, but I, I want to. Because you've mentioned that they were both put in prison, they, they, there was obviously sort of, you know, crimes committed, right? And yeah. I'm conscious, Matt, that we are talking um, about people being tortured for committing crimes. So I'm wondering if you would be okay with someone saying, well, those two lads, they did wrong, so, you know, strap them to the rack or crack out the car battery, car, car battery and, and the jumper cables. Well, they've never done anything to justify that kind of torture. So, do you think it's a sliding scale? Yeah, there's yeah. a point at which the Definitely. crime, but the crime becomes so severe that yeah. that kind when of punishment is justified. Rape, when it becomes rape um, and uh, anything round about the the ballpark of rape and uh, paedophilia and terrorism, like they, they've done in the um, concert hall, shooting up um, mass people, yes. Then you've got if so, someone's got gone and got in a fight uh, on a Saturday night in a pub, um, no, you know that that that's just intuition. You know, you, you you have a few drinks down, yeah, you know, a lot of people, yeah, they get into fights. And okay, and so I'll, what we're saying is that that basically torture is a very very severe punishment, and so it should be matched up to the very very severe crimes because the toll that it takes on a person is horrific. It is a brutal thing to do to another human being. Is that that's the argument that you're making? Yeah, yeah. How can we be certain that the person we're doing it to did the thing that we suspect them of doing? Well, this is the thing. How how, how can America be sure that the person who's uh, on death row has do, done the crime? They you can't. know, it's one. No, the, the, you can never be. But uh, in this instance, what Russia—you uh, can never believe what Russia say. To be honest, but what mm. they're, they're they're saying to the Western to, um, the Western countries and everyone else is these are the people. So you kind of, yeah, you, you kind of have to go with it. That's the thing for me, and I think that's why I favour imprisonment because whilst you can never give someone the time back. The trauma of torture is irreversible in the same way that an execution um, is irreversible. And and I just, I'm not prepared to cross that threshold. Matt, thank you for your call. I think that's probably, I think that's probably the most, um, 
I think that's the closest we've gotten to a, to an to a, a compelling argument in favour. But I, I would say that it sort of when it was flipped on its head, I didn't find find that that justification particularly compelling because um, it's tricky. It's tricky, isn't it? Once we start talking about whether or not your own children should be tortured if they do something wrong, um, let's let's try and resurrect Mark in Hackney. Mark, um, let's let let let's hear from you, my friend. What do you think about this England shirt? Hi, can I just confirm that you can uh, hear me correctly? Yes, again? yeah, we can hear you Amazing. great. Let's go. So I'd like to touch on many points, and I'm not a high-level uh, caller. I'm a, I just like to maintain a middle point. Okay. So you ask a question, and we'll go from there. Sure. Um, in which case, does the England kit bother you in its current iteration with an adjusted St. George's flag? I originally said to your administrator that it it was an issue, uh, the whole thing that's being discussed. However, I haven't heard your um, overview of your analysis on the topic. I completely agree with your uh, way of thinking. However, I've got some nuanced points to make. Okay. What are so, they? Uh, yes, but to refer to your previous caller, um, I, I can't remember her name. I, I just had delayed in Adele. Yeah, so she mentioned about, uh, say, for example, the um, thing being done before in a different place or just having two different flags. So I think that this is a solution. But also, um, I think it's a problem, and it's almost like a paradox. I quite like the, the idea of paradoxes. Mm. Me so, too. Yeah, I think actually life is a paradox, and it should be represented in all areas, including design and including design on football kit. I'm actually a football coach. Okay. And, um, and tell me, and tell me, Mark, about about the I guess the kits you wear. I mean, your your players wear. I mean, in an ideal world, it should be re it should represent a little bit of the team, the energy of the yeah. team. I think about, for yeah. example, you know, um, Peckham Town, right, a uh, sort of small yeah. club in South East London, the Menace. Peckham. Yeah, yeah I, I know it's Peckham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, quite yeah, quite a few people do. I don't know if you've seen the video, the Pecknam Terminator, but that's probably something to discuss <laughs> another day. Um, but you know, it's the very identity of the club is in the kit, right? It's the menace. It's mm. it's you it, know it, they it, they it, were called it, that once once uniform. upon a time. Yeah, exactly. And and it. Or and you it could say it's the, the the soldiers' battalion. Mm. And, and 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 when you play on a football pitch, essentially you're going to war, but peacefully. And so people wearing. The St George's Cross, I guess it's it's meant to kind of imbue imbue people with that sense of patriotism, right? Solidarity and and thing of the nation. Mm -hmm. However, as we saw in the Qatar World Cup, um, nations can be at peace with one another. However, be fighting for the same thing. Yeah, I guess I guess that's that's the point, right? And what I would try and the point I would try and impress upon you, I guess, is that I believe and view um, the inclusion of of. This adjustment to the flag, which yes, is uh, a reference to, I believe, the, the sort of the bisexual flag. That those bisexual people are a part of our society as well, and they are and indeed they, a part and, of the society, and they deserve However, representation. I'd like to, well, I'd like to, I'd like to make a caveat. Okay, go on. What's the caveat? I would like, I would like to say that all opinions are valid. So all opinions are appreciated. Yet not all opinions are valid. Does that make sense? Or do you want me to elaborate? I would like you to elaborate. Yeah. So everyone is entitled to their, opi to their opinion, and their opinion may shape the way they engage in life. Right. However, are all opinions objectively true, or can some be can some opinions be pure delusion or falsehood? Well, opinions are subjective. Uh, if you you might Agreed. have a you might have a view on Keir Starmer, view him a certain way. You might have a view on Rishi Sunak. <laughs> View, view him a certain way, right? I think the last speaks a thousand words. <laughs> but, my Mark, uh, I would suggest to you that sexuality is not an opinion. I would suggest to you that sexuality is... It's an inclination. Mm, I don't know. Well, I guess you... I, okay, fine, yeah. I, I, will, I will take your point that it's an inclination because I view sexuality to be a spectrum, right, with people on different, different places on it that while someone might believe themselves to be... Um, you know, heterosexual in the most pure and simple sense that... Now, can I give you a personal view? You but may. I'm subjective to myself. Yeah. I appreciate beauty in both sexes, but I would only ever engage physically with one gender, and that is female. Good for you. What, yeah, but it doesn't does mean that, that mean? you can't... What? Well, it means that men are beautiful, or yeah. handsome rather, because right. it's appropriate to the way that they... Uh, their masculinity. Okay. Yeah? And women or females are 
Um, sorry, uh, my my brother's just uh, just playing a game online. That's okay, Mark. Really? Can we just start, can we just start, so is is it your position that that people who are bisexual are wrong? Wrong in, in what? In what? Because you need to define the terms you're using. Well, you you've said that sexuality sexuality is uh, comparable to an opinion, and so I kind of want to. I want to dial into the fact, if like an opinion, you believe that sexuality is, can be wrong and right. Mark, you were talking about the way in which you believe sexuality to be like an opinion, and I asked you whether sexuality can be wrong in the same way that people's opinions can be wrong. What's your answer to that? Do you want a yes or no answer, or can I elaborate? You can do both. I'll give a yes or no, and then I'll elaborate, because nothing is ever black and white. Um, anyway, yes. Sexuality can be wrong. No. Uh, uh, which is it? A paradox. Right. Go on then. So to explain the paradox or the symbiotic nature of sexuality. Sorry, Alison. I want you to explain the paradox. What's embarrassing about sexuality? No, I didn't say embarrassing. Sorry, okay. Tell me the paradox. The paradox is that is sexuality objective? Yes. Is it subjective? Yes. That's obviously a contradiction of terms, right? Or or, or um, ideas or statements. Therefore, how can they both coexist within our society, within our um, modern time, or even within the history of mankind? Mark, do you believe that people consciously choose their sexuality? I believe some do, and some are inclined towards it because of their nature that they are created with. When did you choose your sexuality? When did I choose mine? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Without giving too much personal information away, I know fully that I'm only attracted sexually to women because I was able to get to an age of adulthood or maturity, rather, puberty, um, and then begin my sexual exploration physically. However, I think if I had been able to explore sexually under the age of puberty, and there is no age, by the way, of puberty, in my worldview. It's based on a criteria of different variables being fulfilled. Um, if I think it would have been detrimental to me as an adult um, to be able to make that decision or feel the way that I may have felt was correct, although it might not have been the reality of nature, i.e. created things. And I think that may have been a detriment. And I think in today's society, what we see is young people being encouraged to go with the flow and not limit their desires until they're able to make rational, um, educated decisions based on their level of maturity. And I think this is where we see a lot of problems in society. And another football coach, I believe, and the reason I'm a football coach, the actual reason, is not because of football's best thing and I was die leaving of Arsenal. And I'm an Arsenal fan. Yeah, I wear Tottenham kits. I wear Manchester United kits. I wear any... Any football kit that's gifted to me, I'll wear on my back as a proud person supporting that team playing. Mm. Why? Because I believe transferable skills come from anything that gives knowledge. Yeah? If you pardon the pun. <laughs> I accept it, Mark. Thank you for your call. I'm not sure I'm uh, that much closer to understanding what it is you think, but nonetheless, thank you for sharing it with us this morning. Um, Okay, Will is a first-time caller in Reno, Nevada. Will, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hello. Hi. Uh, I suppose I want to know why you're laughing and jeering at Penny Morden, basically saying that she'll or well, people should stand up and fight uh, without focusing on what she's it was saying quite, in between it, those it was, lines. It was quite funny, Will. The delivery was appalling. Oh yeah, it was. No, I totally agree with you on that. But you're giving airtime to the whole the whole speech that she gave. So while making fun of her, you're giving airtime to the things in between those phrases that people will pay attention to. Okay, where keep going. So, I suppose I, I don't know, like wh wh why you're, you're claiming to be against her, but also displaying her entire speech. Uh, on LBC and then jeering at her while she's claiming that she'll defend democracy and, and people should stand up and fight uh, for, for the right, for their rights. Um, 
Well, well, that's that's the nature of democracy, though, isn't it? Like you you listen to what your opponent says. And then it's it's at your discretion to engage with what they have to say, whether that be taking the mick out of them, whether that be critiquing uh, their argument. You're you're entitled to do it, and and I, there's a world. There is no world in which, no matter how much I disagree, unless someone is sort of um you know, inciting violence or or profess, professing you know explicit hate, I would always play out you know the speeches of 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 people, even if I disagree with them. I don't want to live in a society where we don't where we don't hear the arguments of our political opponents. Okay, yeah, then I totally agree with that. It's just, I just find it contradictory that when you laugh and jeer at them for what they're saying without realizing that you're actually displaying their true views, which you may not read between the lines, but many people out there will not just take the fact that she said stand up and fight, but they'll read what she's actually saying. Mm. Yeah, I, um, I think, I don't know if you're familiar with Peter Zamyatin, uh, his, I am, yeah. His book, We, which is, for those unfamiliar, is kind of the precursor. Well, it's, it's sort of the source material, really, for 1984 and a, an original kind of um, um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, um, sci-fi, dystopian, utopian society, Yevgeny Zamyatin. And it's, it's kind of, um, and it's kind of, uh, he has a quote that's like, laughter is our greatest weapon. It can destroy anything, even murder itself. And I think that being able to laugh at someone uh, politically, I think, is the most dangerous thing. Um, for them, to be honest with you, I think I think that's that's well, what it is. I agree in in the context that that, that was written, but we're in a, we're in twenty twenty four where the media is so large that so many people are listening to this, and not everyone is only going to listen to you jeering and making fun of of someone's speech. Mm. So I mean, I mean, I, I mean well, everything I'll, that Penny Morden had to say, and although she's not the leader, yeah, it might encourage more Tories or more people in the Tory party. To maybe think that she has something on offer. Well, when I think what you're we getting, need is an actual change. I think you're getting a little bit hung up on the five seconds or so when I laughed at her speech and might not be ignoring the other ten minutes where I sort of spoke about what she thinks and and, no, and her role. I'm not the talking about party. when you spoke about her speech for five seconds, but you actually played the entire speech we, when she repeated "stand we, up and fight." We played a minute, and that's of just a half hour long that's just incendiary. Okay, do you, th do you think it's incendiary to say that? To say stand up and fight. Yeah. Yeah, I do think it's incendiary, yes. Hmm. That's interesting. What's 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 your what's your problem with, with, with her saying that? Stand up and fight? Well, at the moment, if you say stand up and fight for democracy or stand up and fight for the rights of those less fortunate, it could be considered that you should maybe uh, include violence in that fight. Because fight generally includes violence, does it not? Well, I, th I, th I don't think you would be able to say that she was inciting violence by, by saying that. No, no, I'm was... not saying that. Yeah. No, not, not at all. But you, you've basically displayed those <laughs> provocative and... My, my main point going back to it, because I will, you know, is, is that you've, you've displayed her, her view to the millions that are... Hopefully the millions that are listening. I will always be an avid L LBC listener. And this, to me, as I say, is my first call, so it's a learning experience, and, well, what, what, let's, and I'm let's, very let's willing to listen and, to you. I, Ollie, I appreciate Ollie, that. I admire you. I watch oh, your YouTube. You. I'm very, very, you know, admirable of you. I just basically got very... when I, As soon as I heard you just, like, just displaying her entire speech and only you were then making fun of it without actually focusing well, on I what feel she was like we're getting a, we're getting a little bit into the editorial decisions of the program and I think that people okay, probably would prefer okay. a little bit to hear kind of what you think about Mordant specifically and, and her ideas so let's try and steer it towards Mordant yeah 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 okay. what do you, so what do you think what do you think of her politics at first so I used to be a lot more Tory than I am now a few years ago I'm quite quite changed. I feel like I've gone through sort of a radical change in the last few months. Why did that happen? Um, uh, actually, you know, I can pinpoint it to the HS2 decision. Oh, really? Yeah. As soon as that happened, or when they basically disregarded the North after promising them everything, mm. even though, like, the actual project may have been a, a little bit... Um, Expensive. Expensive or a little bit uh, futuristic or idealistic um, the point was in the in in the passion in the project in the idea um, and they basically just abandoned the north and disconnected them from the south within a day mm. 
Well, in Manchester as um, well, of all places, when he announced that you're at yeah, the party conference. Yeah, and all my family live in Greater Manchester. Um, so they live and work there, and it basically just became kind of a real... I live in the U.S. now, like I studied it, but um, it, it, it became very real, and I realized after so many years of supporting the Tories, and as a young person, literally out of sixth form, believing in their economic policy because of the sixth form that I went to, a, a state academic sixth form that was transformed by the Tories. Mm. Um, as soon as that happened, I just felt like that was kind of the end. Like that promise had, had although it was probably a small thing and then the, in the sort of grandest scale of things, I don't know, it, it it definitely triggered something within me that started looking into the prospects of Labour. And then I suppose at the same time, Keir Starmer came along with a more moderate Labour policy. So is, is Keir Starmer successful? Is, are you one of these people that he's successfully convincing to move from the Conservatives towards the Labour Party? Absolutely. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, he gave a speech, I think, uh, I can't remember the exact uh, location or... or uh, circumstance of the speech but sometime i recall maybe september last year would this um, be a long-term thing for you will would you is as as starmer convinced you to sort of move to labor and possibly stay there or is this just a one-time election thing with the conservative party in its current state a bit of both he's definitely well look here's starmer and sort of education and uh living in the u.s amongst this capitalist cacophony has kind of opened my eyes. I bet it has. I bet it has. Well, we've got to leave it there. We've run out of time. We're at the end of the programme, but I appreciate it. Vincent's in Liverpool. Vincent, good morning. Would you sell your data Hello. for 50 quid? Hello, how are you, mate? Vincent, can I just ask you, sorry, mate, uh, you, you sound like the um, I might be on loudspeaker or something like that. Can you... Can you stick the phone um, a little bit closer? We'll, try, we'll see. We'll see if that's that's any better. I couldn't really hear you. Uh, are you there, All Vincent? Right, thanks. That's better, mate. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Um, uh, go on. Uh, do you actually think that when you people are actually thinking and working out what you do, you know, basically, you know, when you buy a phone, get gas, or do anything, it, it's it's called life, isn't it? To be honest. What, what, what do you what do you mean by that? We just have to accept it. Well, it's not. You, you, there's no option, is there? At the end of the day, you know, we can talk as stuff as you want and ridiculous, and and say they can't do this. They can do what they want, can't they? It, it may be right, but that's what they do, isn't it, Ollie? So we just have to accept it. We just have to. Well, got to. well what could you do? What, what's the other alternative if you can't? Op um, well. Um, obviously, one option you are you are right. You could go and live in the woods in a log cabin and 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 well, sort of go. divest well, yourself from that's society. That's well, I th I think there's probably somewhere in between the two. I think that we could probably settle on you know regulation no, of the companies. Yeah, the difference is, Ali, I talk. It's called common sense, and the things you gather about, to be honest, Ali, is ridiculous. It's flabbergasting, and that's what that's what makes me think. Do you know what? What's going on with the world? To be honest. He's talking about China and four billion pounds. I haven't got enough to put a loaf in the, in the cupboard, and uh, but they've got my details. Mm. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think most people know the the level of information that these companies have about? I don't them? think uh, people are really bothered. Do you? Well, I don't do think. think I don't think they are, but I think they should. I think they should be. Uh, why should they be bothered about that? Well, for the for the reasons that I just said. That what, if a company has this inf if a company has this information about you and you're not even really yeah. cognizant of the fact that it has this information about you that it knows the messages you're sending that it knows the websites that you're browsing that it knows it knows where you live because it has your location data it tracks the time that you get up and go to work it knows when you're everyone knows where you live everyone knows where you live that, that's not hard you can turn it into an absolute bizarre conversation. At the end of the day, Vincent. Uh, totally let me put it. Nuts, it okay, it? let me put it to you like this. Then let me put it to you like this. Oh, you're 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 concerned about the cost of living. You're talk, you're talking to me about heating and eating, right? Yes. Yeah. So, what if? That's called common sense. On that, on me. What right. if you had the right then to actually sell this data for a substantial amount of money? Let's say fifty thousand pounds. So, about fifty thousand pounds would there be more about heating and gas? It's, 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 there's no comparison, is there, what you're on about there? 
Well, I, th I think there actually is because this information is incredibly valuable. Yeah, it's, these companies have built huge revenue streams as a result of this data. They get it from you for free. And I think it's totally so, legitimate so to say... Do, what to do? What to do? You know, it, it goes... Every, people like that what to do? You know, it's Vincent, can you put the phone closer to your face? Yeah, what do you do, Ollie? What do you do? That's what I'm saying. You can sell. You can sell the data. You can sell the. Uh, who do you sell the data to? To Google, to Facebook. And what do you get off that? Well, hopefully some cash to help you get some bread in the cupboard, like you said. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. That I may as well sell it to the Moonies. That's how crazy it is, Ollie. Vincent, thank you for your call. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you. Andrew's in Benfleet. We got you back in the end, Andrew. Uh, good yeah, morning. What yeah. would you like to say? Well, I want, I'm just going to take it in just a little bit of a different direction, but I'm still heading for the point. Now, in the United Kingdom, in the housing market, in construction, anybody can be a builder. There's no, no nothing to say you can't build. If you own a property, you can build. If you buy a shop and you're the owner, you can build. And you can do anything you like, providing you've got planning permission. You don't have to be a builder. Well, this is and the problem. That, that, that planning permission is the a, difficult part. Yeah, but what we're getting is, is we're getting a lot of people with, from affluent areas, that's per my text. They're coming into London. They're buying up properties for all kinds of money, millions. And they're refurbishing them to such a such a high level that nobody can afford to buy them anyway. I mean, there was a guy on the telly the other night near, near Dorchester. He had a magnificent house worth, I think, about 46 million. And he had owned a house around the corner, which he wasn't even using. And it was just sitting there doing nothing. Mm. And another, another problem is, is that, that these foreigners, I've got to call them foreigners because they are foreigners, right? They come over, they come over. And they buy up, but they buy up properties, and they don't employ the local people either. They bring their people what with you, them. What do you mean? They don't, but, well, they bring their builders with them. Right. And they come so over, and they who, we talk, who are we talking about here? Seat. Are we talking about cabals of Russian oligarchs built, built, yeah, buy, they, buying they, up property they, and employing they, Russian builders? Yeah, Russian builders, and and, oh. and, they, and they do what they like, and they they go around and keep <sighs> these out. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna just draw, draw a line under that one. It's. Uh, I'm. I'm used to the uh, coming over here taking our jobs. I'm not used to the coming over here building our houses. That's a. That's a new one for me. But um, nonetheless, Andrew, thank you for your call. Okay, let's go back to John. Let's see if we've we've got any better. John, um, good morning. What would yeah. you like to say? There yeah, we go. Yeah, I, yeah, I hear all that. Yeah, I just think they should have just have left the flag, Saint George, as a football fan. Just, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not happening to what gets me. It's not happening to other countries. It's not happening to the Scotland. Uh, it's not happening to the French. It's not happening to anyone else. To the slapping it in. And it, you're right, it doesn't I work. Think, uh, John, I think, I think Germany have adjusted their kit. I think it's it's pink and blue this year, isn't it? Yeah, but listen, you, you, they have their own... Uh, St. George's flag, little flags, it's just a little... It's not making a big statement. All it is, is a representative thing that uh, put a bit of English in the song to his shirt. If it's not, day, John, if it's not, a big, if it's not a big statement, why does it matter? Because it represents a little bit of identity for English football team. Uh -huh. I, I, I want to watch England, and when I want to watch it, I want to watch someone on that shirt that represents England. Don't I don't want rainbows. I don't want... Here that. we go. Here we go. Okay, we're getting to it now. So, right. rainbows, i.e. the representation of LGBT people, well, they, don't, they, don't fit, they don't fit into your vision of, no, of it could, England. No it, could be no, it could be beans. It could be daffled duck. It could be anyone. I'm not saying that. It does like a rainbow flag. That's a bit right. That's not... It's the bisexual flag, work. yeah. So it is, it is a, it is a oh, flag. Well, well, can you imagine... Well, I'll tell you this on that. Can you imagine if you had... The rainbow flag, and you slipped in a Saint George, and you went, "Oh, I was just slipping a Saint George there," because it doesn't really matter. It looks all right, but the mm. absolute carnage. I don't, I'm not sure there would be. The absolute. There seems to there seems to be there seems to be more carnage now over the reverse, right, John? Yeah, because they're always intervening. I mean, where I live, who are they? Down the street, and it's rainbow flags all and more. We don't really ask. Why does that bother so you? I don't mind. I don't mind. Why does people got, like, flying a flag bother you? 
Okay, you... no, it doesn't bother me. What it does just, bother me? You just said it did. You know, when it's on the English shirt. Right. That's when it bothers me. Why? Because I'm English. Uh, and are, I bisexual be people, are bisexual people not English? Of course they are. But that, that ain't that St. George. So is, it, is it not nice for them to have a bit of representation? Well, if you listen, it's all, I've got gay people who, who work at love St. George. Lesbians and everyone else did love St. George. It represents everyone. It doesn't cut across mm. now. If you wear that, you're a big man and you're six foot five and you've got a big bed. It represents everyone. What you're doing, Ollie, where you're going wrong, you're slipping in sexuality stuff for yourself. You're, you're meant to Well, no, the flag, the flag is, it is representative. It is the bisexual flag, Those the two blues oh, and the purple. It. We don't want it. We well, don't want bisexual stuff. This is what I'm talking about. What do you mean? On, on. Why not? Because the sexuality and also, of who's a person... We? Who's, who's, the group, who's the group you're referring to when you say we? Who are you talking about? All, in, all English. You ask a normal English What's, Yeah, OK. Person. So here we go. Because I, I, think, I think, John, that I'm English bisexual... I'm Yeah, so am I. I think bisexual English fans are also normal. And I think they probably think, probably pretty positively, about these but things. Listen, I go in gay... I go in, I've been in gay, gay play. You know, I'm, I'm not... I'm not a, I don't care if uh, rainbow flags, it doesn't bother me. But the only thing that bothers me is when our country is being looked upon, and then you've got the Scotch, the Irish, the Welsh, the Russians, the Germans, all representing who they are, and you've got England stood there representing uh, the, the rest of us. I mean, where does it stop on it? It's, it's a slippery slope. Oh, a slippery slope to what? what the, well, the, you, the concern, are you concerned that you're going to be turned by? Well, well no. You might as well put Daffel Duck on it. You might as well put you might as well put all the flags on it. Put Russian on it. Put German on it. John, I think John, I think you're I think you're being slightly reductive and 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 cheapening the idea of bisexual representation um, by by saying that it's it's comparable to Daffy Duck. I'd also probably urge you to reconsider in relation to particularly the Germans, uh, particularly the Dutch, European cultures who are. Very uh, accommodating of of people of different sexual orientations, and and were two of the the sort of um, the two teams most most put out by the their inability to wear the rainbow armband um, and the Qatar World Cup. I mean, how do you feel about the rainbow armband? Does that bother you as well? It's England's yeah, it does bother me because right. I don't want it. Because right, okay, so we, want, we're, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere, John. We're, we're realizing yeah. that it's not yeah, about the England, England flag, is it? It's not about I the England want, flag for you. No, because. John, I just I need you to slow down a little bit and speak more directly into the phone. We're losing you. Right. There we go. That's right. Better. Well, I'm trying to say, all right, we might as well get rid of the Union Jack. I'm going to make it in a rainbow flag because it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter one little bit. If you're going down that road, let's go with the, let's go with the flag. Let's have rainbows everywhere. Just get rid of St George. Okay. Get rid of, get, I don't think we should. I don't think we should. I don't think we should do any of those things, John. But let's just let, let's just say fine. Let's just say that's going to happen. What's wrong with that? Well, well, because people want their own identity. They want to represent England, right? Like, yeah, like, like to, gay the people, Irish, like the gay Welsh. people, yeah, like gay people and trans people no, and bisexual you're people. You're bringing in the sexuality. Listen, you're bringing in the sexuality no. stuff all the time. John, the rainbow flag is the LGBT flag. That's that's what it's about. Right. Well, we don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want an LGBT flag stuck on my English shirt. I want to watch. I want to see Beckham. John, can I right? ask you? John, can I ask you one one final question? I want you to be. I want you to be honest with me with this one, all right? Yeah. Why are you so scared? Scared? Because it's a slippery slope. Basically, we're wearing rainbow shoes, rainbow everything. It's a slippery slope to the national identity. That's why I'm scared. And if we're honest about it, is your problem not with... The rainbow not flag. Not at all. Not, your, problem's not with, your problem's not with the no. rainbow flag, but with the no, people that no. it represents. It, I just want the football side of it, and I want it to represent England. Nothing to do, I'm not, I, whatever the rainbows do, let them do it. But at the end of the day, I just want to represent England, so represent us all, all of us. Whether you're gay, lesbian, straight, whatever you are. Thanks, John. I'm going to say something controversial here. I think that gay people are England fans too.
Pat is in Stepney Green. Pat, good morning. What do you reckon? Should we ban dangerous sports? Well, you know, the old saying is to live is to risk. Hmm. And if you if there were to be banging of boxing, rugby, uh, and said other dangerous sports, you you know, where do you go? They, the only thing they couldn't ban and wouldn't be able to ban is war, which kills so many people or, or you know, taking off on a space shuttle or, or going down to the depths in a submersible where you're never going to come up again. So... Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Basically, if you, if you look at it in a logical sense, it's a silly debate. It's an, it's, it's an irrelevant debate because there'll always be risk. They'll all, whether you ban every kind of sport, well, you couldn't ban war, could you? Well, Pat, I think it, I don't think it is silly, right? Because the things well, you're it is a silly debate. The things it you're ta- the things you're talking never, about the things you're talking happen. about. I don't know. Let's say, okay, you mentioned war, so let's let's talk about Russia and Ukraine. Uh, you know, yes, obviously there is a ginormous risk involved on fighting on the front lines. But you, it's you say to a Ukrainian about that. It's yeah, I, I accept the risk. It's existential. I'm defending my country. Um, with space exploration, you know, for for the well, actually, open question, but but let's just say for the for the betterment of mankind, you know, the advance of humankind, that's a risk people were willing and still are willing to take. The reason I think this is interesting is because, you know, sport at the end of the day, what it comes down to, it's you know, it's it's smashing a ball around a pitch, and actually, whilst it can mean everything in the moment, it actually can also mean nothing, and so. Whether someone should do that and jeopardise, you know, their long-term health as a result of doing it, I do think there's a there's a there's a, something interesting to tease out there. Well, I mean, it's like there's more women in sport now than there ever was. Right, where's this going? Well, I'm just saying, but it, 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 it's it's a, a woman is a, a more has a more fragile uh, physiology. Uh, I mean, in, in I mean, in women's football, who's to say that in later years that lots of women will won't go down with degenerative brain diseases when they should, would have done done twenty thirty years ago? Um, everything, everything Pat, you, you want. No, when it comes to physiology, want, would you would you would you describe it as as quite a fragile thing to be able to grow a human being for nine months? In your womb, and then and then give birth to it. That's that's no, quite that's well, that, quite an intense thing, isn't it? I'm, I'm yeah, not sure yeah, I describe that as fragile. You couldn't you couldn't you couldn't have women's sport to the same intensity as men's sport. What are you talking about? No, well, it's, it's that you could well, you couldn't have a woman's team play a man's team. Why not? I mean, you could, couldn't you? Well, well, unless you want to get see them smash, get about fifteen, sixteen nil. But what my point is, my point to all of this is, you know, if you ban dangerous sports, women's, men's, whatever you like, Mm. you're still going to have danger in everyday life. It's impossible to duck out of of being hurt. Pat, can I give you can I can I give you a statistic here? Um, Women's skulls are thicker than men's. The average skull thickness for men is six point five millimeters, and the average for women is seven point one. That's true. That's true. So, but their strength, well, their strength, uh, it, 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 like, uh, 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 the worst man's tennis player would, would dominate women's tennis. If, are if you was, insane? Yeah. No, you think, not, you think the worst... No, okay, okay, okay Pat, 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 stop, <laughs> stop. You think, do you think you could beat Serena Williams in a game of tennis? No, no, what I'm talking about is the worst professional is the worst men's professional or a very low rank professional would, oh, have, not a sure. two, would have a serve too powerful. Do you think? It's, it, it's been mooted. That's why you have women and men's individual like sports that are set apart. And, and irrespective of this, I still say it's, so, it's, so a, Pat, it's a silly debate. So Pat, yeah, I think you are being a bit silly now. So when so when we watch a mixed mixed doubles game, do, do the men just relentlessly hit the ball at the women and they're not able to respond? Well, I mean... It, well, no. It, it, now you're going... Now well, no. You're going to, it's... Look. The, the, the fact is, it's like um, most of these things. 
it's here you get mixed doubles, of course you do. But it's in it, that's in uh, 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 um, uh, one asset, the facet of tennis. Well, well but to move, well, it's the to fa- move it's the on. Facet, it's the facet. I'm sure you'd like to move on. It's the, it's the move, facet move, that move. you've tr- that you've tried to have an argu- that you've tried to argue about. Oh, I mean, I've got to, I've got to say, Pat. I've debate. got to say, we started we started with a conversation about how dangerous sport is, and yes, completely unprompted, sport. you've just yes, you've just segued into the apparent inferiority of women, which I think is quite no, revealing. Now you're being now you're being a little bit like s- treading on eggshells, but it's it's I wouldn't proved, say so. it's proved. It's like women's rugby and men's rugby. You can't have the two playing against or even mixed rugby. It's, it's, it's because women will get hurt. But I mean, like, women against women. That's not what we're talking it, about. I don't understand why. Why you know? I'm I'm having a conversation with you about how dangerous sport is. It, Who's suggesting yeah, that men and women dangerous. should play it's full contact good. rugby against yeah, each other? Who's you, suggesting you, that? You, what I'm saying is. Where you've got women boxing, you've got women of, of doing all sorts of things now. Which fair enough. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, what they call it, um, a world that is inclusive now. Um, right. I'm not entirely sure where this is going, Pat. So I'm going to draw a line under it there. Um, thank you for calling. Thank you for your for your contribution. Jawad is in Harlow in Essex. Jawad. Good morning. What would you yeah, like to hello. say? Yeah, hello. Hi. Good morning, Arlie. Morning. I'd like to say it's immoral because I use data and I actually brought Libya, the fifth richest country's world debt, to zero. What do you using mean? Using data. What do you mean, sorry? Well, I use data to bring Libya's world debt to zero. How does... I supply data to the Libyan embassy and their currency crash and their uh, petrol price, uh, their petrol... Uh, Supplied more than in, in, sold more in Africa. I'm not entirely. I'm not entirely sure what you're referring to, Jawad. How about let's let's make it about um, your data and and the price you're willing to to sell it for. No, I'm not willing to. No, 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 no. My expertise is valuable to me. So you would never sell. You would never sell your your data. No, I wouldn't because that's my bread and that's my bread and butter. Are you on Facebook? Uh, no, I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter. So they so you they've got your data, haven't they? Yeah, they have, but uh, but but uh, uh, but they're not. Doesn't, they're, they're, doesn't sound like great expertise my, if you're giving it to them for free. I'm talking about, isn't it? Right, go on. So, uh, yeah, um, that's it, really. I, I wouldn't do it. It's immoral. And you're fine with those companies going through your messages, your emails, your keystrokes. You're 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 okay with that. That, that's all right, but not my data. They're, 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 they're the same thing, aren't they? That's what I mean. That's no, there's mean data numbers data. and statistics, remember that. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, you know, you use it for certain things. You know, I mean, uh, in, a way, in a way it's beneficial, in a way it's not. But I think it's immoral for them to offer you £50 for your data. Why? Why is it immoral? Why is it immoral? Because that's part of my personal brand. So, yeah, but just because it's difficult for you uh, and the w- the work that you do, that doesn't mean it's immoral, does it? Well, if I could bring Libya's debt down to zero using data, why should I sell it for fifty pounds? Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know where we're going with this, um, Jawad. To be quite honest with you, I don't. I, don't, I think Libya is officially reported as. Um, as having a, a debt to GDP ratio of 155 percent by the IMF, so I, I'm pretty sure they're still they've still got quite a lot of debt going on. Peter in West Norwood, what do you think? Um, well, your opinion is based on somebody who lives in a safe country, and you're not exposed to any of it. You you don't have anything that threatens you every day. You don't have any terrorism. Everything is protected, and this is why people like you think that everything is acceptable and there should be roses everywhere everywhere you go. But that's not reality in some countries and most countries in the world. What's wrong with so just, what's wrong with roses being everywhere? Sounds quite well, nice. Well no, you can't look at it the world like that because the world is really violent at the moment. And I think if you, you Okay, I, so I, do you think that violence in the world is a bad thing, Peter? Well it's a bad thing and I think So why would you inflict why would you inflict more violence on other people if you think it's bad? Th- th- that, that's not violence against other people. That's prevention. If that could prevent somebody else doing the same thing, how it's could not it? A bad how thing. could it prevent? How could it prevent that happening? 
because is seen as a negative thing and i think the problem with people like you that you want everything to be fair and perfect but isn't is that a problem you know, what's wrong with that well what, what's wrong with that because you're not exposed to any of it do you want you, so do you want a world where you want things to be unfair and horrible no, that's the thing what's there the difference between be us then? punishment yeah but that's the point if you problem with what you're saying to people say if you if you told she's not not acceptable you 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 cut down the argument straight away because people don't want to answer that question the question isn't whether it's acceptable or not the question is that the world is too violent and i think there should be a lot more pressure put in on people who are com committing the violence otherwise people will get away with by committing all the by time. committing more violence no that's not yes, that's the whole point the point is that they've committed a major atrocity and you need to be, need to look at it from a different angle i agree that they should be punished i think we should put them in prison well, well to prison to do what to and be what? punished they live in prison and a perfect life and the families of perfect life people. what do you want about mm. right per perfect life where you're where you're locked well, up just just imagine that, being locked sound... up in prison and you've got no consequences whatsoever you got hundreds no those, no, those are the consequences no yeah. 140 people are associated with at least eight people in the world, right? Somewhere. So eight people multiplied by eight. That's how much suffering you, they've caused. And you think two individuals sitting in prison and dying in prison, that's enough. Not, that, they should be killed. So what, what, I'm sorry. So what, you think they should be killed? Yeah. By Punished, what? Yeah. By torture? You think they should be killed, tortured to death? You need to get the information. If, if you can prevent anything else happening, you need to get the inf information. What information are you going to get out of them? Well, whatever information they can give you, because that could prevent something else happening. You've caught them Probably already. Like, hmm? you've, look, you've caught them already. I argument against you to say, if your family was killed, you're going to shoot me down. And that's the problem. I'm not going to use that. You need to look at the reality of the world. You need to look at it, how brutal the world is. But I, I, I don't buy this argument, Peter, that the world is brutal, therefore we should also brutal. be brutal. It's too brutal. That's the problem, and people like you uh, allow so how, that to happen. How on earth can you sit here and say that the world is too brutal and simultaneously call for people to be tortured? In order to get information to prevent something else happening, I agree that they should be tortured, they can be tortured, is but justified. If they've already committed the terrorist attack, though, haven't they? Yeah, and if they've got some information that can be used against something else happening, why not? And do you think they would... I, I'll put it to you like this. If you were being tortured, Peter, and someone someone asked <clears> you to tell tell them about a future terrorist attack, do you not oh, think well, you'd make on, something but up? You, but that's the thing. No, no, hang on. How do you know? You see, that's the problem with people like you, that you don't know what's happening. You keep saying people like me. What do you mean? Yeah, people like you that assume too much. What, what, what am I assuming? You, you have no idea how much they know about those people. They've managed the, the fact that they've managed to capture them so quickly, they knew something about it. Or they may have have them on the radar and and you can't sit in a studio and say oh you know they captured five people from the street and and then just going to do that as a pr stunt no that's not what i said no but that's exactly what you're saying that if, if i'm captured i've not committed any crime why would i be captured i'm really i'm really struggling with this idea that you why think are you that struggling? You, you're struggling because you with keep your own saying, ideas no i'm not struggling with my own ideas i'm struggling yeah, with the idea because... that wanting to live in a better world that's free from torture is in well, some you, way you know, a, a, like a, a bad world, thing if you want a better world there has to be punishment somewhere yeah on the line like lifelong because imprisonment people are people people are violent humanity is a violent we are violent species okay do you, you think that's, do you think it's good do you think it's good yeah. that we are violent no so, no, so why is it that. okay to imp to inflict more violence on other human beings? I'll tell you what. There's there's an, an inherent log gap in your logic. No, it isn't. It isn't, because punishment is one of the... It could prevent something else from happening. But why do you have police... That, that, that's a good... You know, if you say, get rid of the police and people can do what they want. No, people can't do what they want. They can't commit crime. If they commit crime, there's a punishment. And in those countries, yep. that's what they do. And they go to prison. And and you know yeah. and you know why and you know why a confession obtained under duress is inadmissible in our justice but how system. How do you know? How do you know that you, as an individual, you have no idea exactly what they knew or Russian authorities knew about those people? So you can't make that assumption that they just captured five people from the street and they say, "Hey, this." Okay, the people what would they know? The what would they? What would they need to know about them that would justify no, chopping you, off a bit you of their ear? I don't know that. You and I don't know that. Because it doesn't matter. You is there is there a piece opinion. of information? Is there a piece of information that the Russian authorities could have that would ever justify chopping off one of their ears and force feeding yeah. it to them? Yeah, yeah. What is that? What what would that be? Well, preventing another crime, or maybe you know, 
terrorism, terrorism is not an individual person, it's individuals, it's people together. So, so if they can uh, capture... Peter, I'm, I'm, uh, Peter, I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you one, last, one last chance with this. Well, no, I think you should give yourself last chance and accept that torture is acceptable. Seriously, <laughs> you should. That's, you should that's for you to I should learn. just accept that, well, is it? You know what? Is it when, for me to day, learn? When you get a little bit older, so you want right? to? Oh, okay, here we go. No, no, go no. on. Oh, when, when I get, when get I get a little bit, bit older, older, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? When you get to the age when you actually understand the world and see how toxic it is and how violent it is, maybe you change your opinion. But that's Peter, too early for you to understand. Peter, that, at what at what age can I can I expect to become okay with torture? Sixty, probably. Once you learn that life isn't perfect, right? Because that's the problem. You just came out of this cocoon of perfection and you have no opinion. Your opinion is just skewed based on your life. I don't... perfect. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that my, my age has anything to do with me opposing, oh, yeah, opposing torture, me, to be quite honest with you, Peter. Okay, final, I, final listen, chance. Peter, up, final listen, chance. Listen to me, please. I final chance here. I grew up in communism, right? You need I to, grew up Peter, in communism. Peter, right? this is your I last chance. Peter, listen to me, please. You're, yeah. you're saying that these people have committed a crime and yeah. that we should try and stop them from committing another, another crime. That's, that's, that's your argument, okay. Because you, you, would say that, I, you would say that, the commi- that committing another crime is a bad thing, right? It's not a crime. That's the thing. It's not a crime. If an individual commits an atrocity like that, to get information from them, it's not a crime to get the information from them. It's a means to actually get the even information. If, even if that crime. means chopping off a piece of their ear, that's not a crime. It's a punishment. What's the difference? Well, it's not a crime because... Chopping off someone's to- ear is not a crime. I think your understanding of the whole situation is skewed. Based I, th- on I think your your worldview is pretty skewed if you think chopping off someone's ear isn't a crime, my friend. Um, thank you for, for those extraordinary insights. Um, Edward's in Brighton. Edward, what would you like to say? Um, well, you, you seem to be missing the point a lot on this uh, risk business. Um, there is massive, massive amounts of money to be made yeah. by top sportsmen and women. Yeah. Do you think they give a damn about the risk? I'd say so, if yeah. You, if, you say, if you said to a footballer, now this is, now, heading a ball is highly dangerous, but you can't pick up two or three hundred thousand pounds a week. Um, ah, so this is interesting. Going to do? This is interesting, Edward. So what price? What price early onset dementia? They don't think about the risk. Sports, sports people go into sports and they don't think about the risk. The money is too fantastic. You take, you take a boxing. Um, you take Tyson Fury. He picked up about 50 or 60 million pounds on his last fight. Do you think he, he gives a damn whether somebody punches him on the melon or not? Do you really do? <laughs> well, well, I think... I, no, no, I clearly, no, I clearly don't think that, he, that he's that bothered about it. I think as a rugby player or potentially even as a footballer, where a footballer is a good example, right? Because I don't think, until these advances in, in sort of... Um, modern medicine and, and sort of the analysis of, of brains as a result of, you know, autopsy after death. We're learning more about this. And if you knew going into it that long-term brain damage was a risk, I think that changes the conversation. Where, no, with well, boxing, I, it's no, quite I, obvious, I, I, right? I, I, with, with, with boxing, you know, you're a fighter. Like, you're, 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 you, you accept there's hang risk. On, hang on a moment, hang on a moment. Let's, let's, let's just cut to the chase here. Sure. Rugby, rugby has been around for several hundred years. Yeah, when you think of it. how many people, when you think of how many people have died playing rugby, and all the matches, and all the millions of people who participated in, it's negligible. It's absolutely negligible. Does that make it okay? Of course it does. It's 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 it's, it's all, all all manner of life is a risk. You can go out shopping, and somebody could stab you to bloody death on the streets these days. Everything's a risk. Hmm. But that's that's kind of what, what I'm getting we do? at, Wrap right? Ourselves in, what, what do we all do? Wrap ourselves in cotton wool? Well, I, I did ask and that. Li- I did ask that question earlier. Yeah, and, and you live in a sterile world with no, where there's no risk involved at all. I How don't think so. No. Be? Yeah, I don't. I don't want to live in that world either. Well, there we go. So these people are doing it under their own volition. Well, let them get on with it. What's all about panning it? So, so brain damage. Millions of people, mil- millions of people around the world get get massive amounts of enjoyment out of sport. Yeah. What do we do? Turn them into a lot, bunch of miserable sods or something? Of course not. Let's get on with it. Let's enjoy life. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Let's enjoy it. A little bit of, little bit of brain Absolutely. damage. Absolutely. A little bit a, of brain a death, damage. A, a death now and again. It happens. It happens every day. It's a very blasé attitude to people dying, Edward. Well, not really. Not, no, I don't <laughs> think it's blasé at all. I think I'm being, I'm being very said, honest with you. You said a couple of and, deaths uh, here or there. And, and, and pointing it out. 
I'm, you know, I'm, is, is, is quite Jockey's callous. Like riding horses. Uh, but is this quite callous uh, attitude? No, I don't think it is. I think if you're wet, woke, and a weak league Nelly, then you mostly would think that. <laughs> But if you're, this, if you're I tell you what, I would not have expected per- this phone in to go to go to the way that it's going, where well, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm being accused of being. If, if, by if, the way, if, 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 my argument around this was not that we should ban it. I'm asking the question. I'm having the conversation, and yet I'm, I'm being accused of being a, a, a what did you say? A weak need woke Nelly. Well, this is this is what it sounds like to me. Yeah, well, just I'm forget sure about listening. all that. Who, who cares about heading a ball? Well, I, I who think, cares about it? I who, think who, if who you're okay, but, okay, Edward. Let me put it to you like this. Let me put it to you like this. Let's say you're not at the top of the game. Let's say you're League Two. Maybe you're in the conference. You 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 play as a pro. Um, you have a long career, thirty years, but yeah. you're not on hundreds of thousands of pounds a week. And no. you know you you retire. You end up. I don't know. Maybe you work as a coach. Maybe you do something completely different. You leave sport, and in your forties, you start to forget things. In your forties, you struggle to concentrate. In your 40s, you struggle to get out of bed in the morning because of a sense of fatigue, because of a sense of confusion. And you go to the doctor and it turns out early onset dementia, another 10 years, Parkinson's, you die, they do, yeah. they do the autopsy, yeah. and it turns out you had CTE. I think that's a very different proposition to some, um, well, I don't know, Kevin De Bruyne or whoever. Well, let me put it this way. Millions of people die every year who don't even participate in sport that get dementia. So, How does that grab you? So it's okay. I don't, I don't understand what your what your point is. Well, you just you just said that that playing sport, pe- people start getting all these uh, strange, peculiar uh, goings on in their minds from, from dementia. Well, millions of people die every 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 year of dementia, of Parkinson's, everything. Yeah, yeah I know. There's no difference. And What's the difference? People are participating in sport through their own volition. Yeah. They know the risks, so let it go. Okay, let it go. Sam is in Shepherd's Bush. Sam, what do you reckon? Is this has this adjustment to the St George's Cross bothered you? Good morning. Hi, I'm a UK born citizen. I'm an avid football fan. I'm not overly ang- angered by the current. However, I'm glad that you highlighted about the bisexual and gay because as soon as I saw the cross, that's the first thing that did come into my mind. And I know you talk about inclusive inclusivity. But, you know, the gay community, probably gay LGBT community, have got a lot of recognition through that be gay pride day, through um, same-sex partners on Strictly Come Dancing, you know, all gay pride live at the Polo. I don't think that sports and all that should be politicised and you know, used for these things. And, and again, uh, and another important point, you talk about people, you know, inclusivity, I think a poll, I think a poll should be, you know, carried out of what the UK citizen British public make of the flag and what their opinions are and what they prefer. And also, even if they need to be politically correct or need to hold a certain view of value in the public eye, I think even the England squad should be asked and questioned on their opinion and what their preference is of the, the flag. The thing, is that, the thing is, though, Sam, it's not a replacement for the St George's Cross. No one's saying that, that England's flag should change totally. It's just its representation. It's just the, the part of it on the back of the kit there. At, at the back of the neck. Yeah, but you're right. Listen, I can, I can add to that. It could have been anywhere else on the laces, on the bands, on the arm, anywhere. But the cross, like you said, a symbol that represents patriotism, England, England heritage, all that. Let me give you an example that you talk about symbolism and flags. If that had to be some sort of a Islamic or a Muslim or a flag, you know, people have opinions and they get, you know, in, up in arms and they get, you know, certain ways about that. So symbolism is very important. It could have been anywhere else on the kit or anything else, but the flag itself is, you know, it's a, it's a desecration of the flag. It's a, it's a mockery of the flag. But this so is the point, isn't it? Is it, is it a desecration? In, in public, in media, this is the on thing, Sam, platforms. Sam, please, hello, please. The, the, hello? Is, it, is it a desecration of the flag, right? Because we, we've changed it for, for Team GB, the Conservative party has changed it. The police have adjusted the colours of the flag before, and no one batted an eyelid. No one cared. You said, mentioned about two years ago about the flag. Here. That was in times of COVID. People had their minds all over the place. I'm a UK born citizen. Having said that, I am British, Asian, Pakistani, Muslim. Even Rishi Sunak himself didn't agree with the change. He's Indian of Indian heritage. He's not of English. Even he didn't agree with it. I'm UK British. 
to them. I love you, the UK, but even me myself, I don't personally agree with it. You know, they've got enough representation on many platforms, on many media things. So I don't think that sports, especially the English flag itself, should be politicised in that fashion. Is it? Is it politicising it though? Is that what it is? It's, it's, it's in full I feel like the, the people that are viewing this as, as that it's being politicised are just the people that have a problem with it. You know, it's, impose, it's imposing a particular particular narrative and ideology on the UK public in in the whole. You think? Uh, I really, I really don't want to go down this road, Sam. Like, do you, are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Okay. When you say ideology, what are you referring to? Listen, I have got no problem with uh, you know gay LGBT. But the ideology, the narrative is being imposed. So are you saying are you saying that sexuality is an ideology? Well, if you want me to be honest, a plug goes into a socket. A plug doesn't go into a plug. Stop a it. Can't, right, a okay. Socket, a socket. A, a socket I, I, I'm it. really hope I've been really hoping this hour to be able to have a conversation with with let's people uh, that have that have serious no 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 l yeah let's be realistic sam i mean wh what what do you want to be realistic about do you want to be realistic about the fact that the homosexuality occurs across human societies across history and we've actually discovered as well across species by the way recently first ever video of humpback whales yeah, engaging glad, in sexual I'm intercourse I'm I'm it's two, it's two please, males please, i cannot believe i really i will let you speak in a moment but i i am so desperate to talk to someone about this that isn't just a, a, the, as we ask a couple of questions we eventually end up finding that they come up on here and say, well, a plug can only go into a socket. Two plugs don't go together. I mean, what what does that mean? What's that, what's that a symbol for? Please, okay. The, the, you mentioned the animals and recently the study and, and you know, uh, uh, that's in a very few minority of, uh, of species animals and, and, and even the scientists themselves don't fully understand it. If you look at a society, mankind, and animal kingdoms as a whole, there is a positive, there's a, you know, a, a positive, a negative, a why and without 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 intervention, man can't, mankind, a man and man, woman, woman can't conceive and can't reproduce. It's human mankind trying to play God, trying to impose ideology and narrative. They way of we society. don't, but we don't just have sex to reproduce, do we, Sam? Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. Hello. Okay, right. That was the end of that. Then, um, an interesting one. Nonetheless, okay, I think we're going to draw a line under our conversation uh, about the flag. I'm kind of fed up of speaking to homophobes. Uh, let's go to Andy in Guildford. Andy, should terrorists receive legal representation? Unfortunately, yeah. Um, I don't think they should, but if, you know, law is they've got to be represented. You know what I mean? Um, so you don't, you don't think you don't think they should receive legal representation? Uh, what I think doesn't matter. The law says they've got our representation, right? But the, but what it's all about is when they're found guilty, they get put in the nick for for life, for instance, right? Yeah, thirty years. Thirty years. We've got to keep them for thirty years out of taxpayers' money, yep. right? If they're found guilty like that and it's proven guilty. I think the death penalty should be brought back. The thing being is, is why won't people have a discussion and a vote on it? Um, when people, when you mention a death penalty, it's like you, it's like the dreaded play. You know what I mean? Mm. Everyone wants to say, oh, well, you know, well, it's you know, it's not right. It's um, humane, all uh, unhumane, all this sort of thing. No, there's no deterrent. Like well, I think I think I think thirty years in prison is is a bit of a deterrent. But Andy, I just put it oh, to you simply, yeah, yeah, simply, yeah, yeah, the thing Andy, is, you're calling but, from Guildford, right? You're, 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 yeah, yeah. you're calling you're call, you're calling from Guildford, yeah. right? There's there have been miscarriages of justice, famously, right, where people were found guilty of something that they didn't actually do. What what would happen if we killed those people? Right, that is a very well. It's a very very slim chance. How many times it happened? Two or three? More, a great deal more than that, my friend. But, but how many people? Like, I mentioned, have been... I mentioned three in the last quarter, right? You, you know. Oh, yeah, okay. Guilford four, Birmingham many, six, yeah, Andrew yeah, Malcolm. How many people, like cousins, for instance, and those sort of people, what have been found to 
be doing what they've been, you know, they've been doing. You know, they should be the ones what are strung up. Simple as. But no one will open a debate whether they want hanging to come back. No one won't even bring the subject up. It's like it's like a taboo subject. The problem you've got is in this country, there's no deterrent. No deterrent at all. But, but, but spending 30 years in prison is, is a deterrent. Well, of course it is. You know... But you said there's funny. none. There is you've one. You've got these idiots. You've got these idiots what go out That's and shoot right. someone, right? Yeah. And they say... And they turn around and say, well, oh, OK, I, I shot one, two, three people, killed them. What are they going to do to me? Bang me away for, for life. Mm. What do we do? Who kicks them? So in, in the case, Andy, in the case of the Birmingham Six, right, we've got, we've got bombers were found not guilty of terrorism because their case was found to be unsafe. This was also the case with the Cardiff Four, who were found guilty of murder, yeah. but later DNA proved that they were innocent. So you, if, we'd right. have killed, if we'd have killed those people, we can't take that back, can we? Correct. But how many, how what many other it, people... What do you mean, correct? That's the whole, that's oh, the no, argue, no, that's the whole thing. Correct. You know, you can't bring them back, right? But how many people... With, with a DNA, you know, with a DNA now, and how they can prove things, and how things are worked out now, is a lot more sophisticated than what it was years ago. Andy, if what? you, if, if you were falsely accused of terrorism... Right. And if you were convicted... Right. And if you were hung, how would you feel about it in heaven? In heaven? Oh, you don't think you're going there? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, purgatory or hell? No, 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 no. no, no but yeah. seriously, tell yeah, me, tell me. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. yeah, I can see where you're coming from. But the way things are now, going back years ago, there wasn't DNA and there no, wasn't want, all this sophisticated... Andy, tell me how you would feel. I wouldn't know much about it, would I? Would, would you? Would you like? You'd like a legal defence, though, wouldn't you, to defend yourself oh, but, from the yeah, wrongful yeah, accusations? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm not saying that. Everyone well, you did say that. You said earlier that people shouldn't receive legal representation. No, no, I didn't say that. You did. What I said was me personally. No, what I said was. Am I being gaslit on the radio? You did say that. You said no, you said it, it doesn't it, matter it, because you can't change the no. law, but you don't think that terrorists should receive legal representation. Well, that's what you said. Me, per me personally, if it was me, I wouldn't give them legal representation, but as the law stands, they've got to have it. That's what I said. I said that. But the, Not, yeah, yes, but this, this is my point. You, you, think, you think they shouldn't, So, in, uh, uh, but, but simultaneously, if you were in their shoes and you were falsely accused of it, you just said you would, you would like the legal representation. That's right. But what I'm saying to you is, <laughs> is what I think doesn't matter. By law, everyone's, le you know, le is got to have legal representation. I think it's possibly quite good that what you think doesn't matter, Andy. Uh, appreciate the call. Thank you. Uh, Kevin's in Basingstoke. Kevin, what would you like to say? Dave is in Hull. Dave, good morning. Should we torture terrorists? Oh, hello. Well, I d I'm not saying that we should torture terrorists. But I would just say that if terrorists don't want to be tortured, I would suggest to them that they don't do terrorism. So you think that justifies it? I'm not saying it justifies it, but what would they expect in this world? Especially from authorities like the Russians. Mm. Well, I think this, this, is, this is kind of the, the problem, isn't it? Is that I would like to think... Um, and I can see we're already getting lots of text messages from people saying that you know they fully deserved everything that they got, and that you know we're we're soft for not for not doing what Putin has done to those who commit acts of terror here in the UK. But I think that's the point of difference, surely, isn't it? The point of difference is that in a liberal democracy where we have human rights and and people have a right not to be tortured, that that is one of the things that distinguishes us from a dictatorship. And if we and you know, if we if we want to or we have that base urge to inflict that on another person then we're no better, surely. Well, yes, that's true. I agree. It's different here from Russia. But if the terrorists don't want this to happen to them, keep out of Russia. How do you define a terrorist, Dave? Well, I don't know. People who do terrorism, people who go into theatres and shoot people and blow the damn place up and set it on fire. Yeah. And this idea that so would you okay let's i'll offer you a definition so someone who commits an act of violence for a political aim 
Would you just would you describe that as t- that's that's a, an acceptable definition, right? Anyone who commits an act of violence is uh, either a terrorist or a criminal, or maybe they're insane, or goodness knows what. Any act of violence. Well, yes, an act of violence. Better better be locking up the British Army then, aren't we? Oh well, look. You are being silly now. You said any, you said any act of violence. You said, should, the, should, the poli- should the police head down to Wembley next time AJ's boxing and, and throw him in the back of a van? You're just trying to start an argument now. No, I'm just trying to tease out the nuances of it. Uh, the reason I'm saying this, Dave, is because I think terrorist isn't actually a particularly useful, useful term. Well, whether it's a useful term or not, these people must know... That if they go into Russia and go into a theatre and shoot people and set it on fire, if they're not sure that they're going to get away, they just better be prepared for whatever they get. OK, let me, let, me, let, me, let me put it to you like this. Would you say that what they did in that theatre was wrong? Well, I don't know because I just heard the story. I don't know the details. OK, but, but yes, it's, shoot, it's, shooting innocent people is wrong, right? Well, yes, of course it's wrong. Because we shouldn't hurt other human beings? Yes. So why is it okay to hurt them afterwards? I didn't say it was okay. Personally, I wouldn't do it because I'm a squeamish sort of person and I haven't had much experience of committing torture torture on people. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. But the point still stands. If they go to Russia and do something like that, what are they expecting to happen? Mm. Yeah, I just, I don't, I, don't, I don't buy this argument that they sort of had it coming. Uh, Dave, thank you for your call. Uh, Lenny is in Ashford. Lenny, what would you like to say? Good morning, Ollie. Morning. Uh, well, I'm a strong believer that there should be no, to get any benefit at all in our country, you've got to qualify uh, qualify how? Well, you've got to contribute towards the system before you get anything, and uh, and that means all benefits. But it's but it's a right, isn't it? Not a benefit. No, it should. Well, if you're you're saying it, it you're right. But what it is, I I believe that when you, anyone enters our country to claim any benefit whatsoever. They have. They should have had to qualify for it, and it shouldn't be given like it is given now. So you, you don't. You don't think there are rights. You think that no, no. I mean, I mean, if Free if you, you just take Spain, no. I, I spend a lot of time in Spain. Right. If you if you go to a Spanish hospital because you're poorly, you need one of three cards. You need your sip your sip card. Which is you're basically you're na- you've qualified through the national health. Mm. You need uh, your European cards, you know, the our NHS card to get treatment, or you need a credit card. Mm. Otherwise, you don't get nothing. And that is the way. And the Spanish health system is far superior to ours. So, am I to take from this this line of argument and line of logic, Lenny, that you you think that? Um Terrorists should have should have to have contributed to via paying taxes before they would be entitled to legal aid. Yes. And so, w- when I tell you that that the majority of those who have committed terrorist acts in Britain in recent times are, are British born, and so they have lived in our society, they've contributed to the tax system. You're okay with them receiving legal aid? Well, as long as they have paid an, a long enough contribution, say f- uh, f- four or five years. And they and they contributed towards the country. Yes, they would be entitled like anyone else. For me, it's 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 just a it's a right. It's not a benefit. Um, it's something you're entitled to. I don't think we're going to. I think there's just a fundamental difference in opinion there between the two of us. Tom is a first time caller in Shoreditch. Tom, what's on your mind? Yeah, hi, Ali. Um, I think first and foremost, it, it, it's interesting that the the subject appears to be appears to be about Russian torture. Uh, and about the fact that uh, this is this has happened in 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 Russia, I think if we're going to talk about 
whether torture is, is right or wrong. Maybe we should start with we should start with the, the friendly face of, of, of Tony Blair and George Bush, mm. who of course picked up people from around the world um, and and had them and had them tortured via Scotland, actually. Um, but but the point I, actually, I really wanted to make, Ollie, is um, is that you're 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 a pretty you know you're a pretty sort of you're a guy that sort of sees both sides, and it's interesting that I think the, the real question here is about due process. Okay. This is about this is about um, it's about the rule of law or not. Yep. Uh, and and I think that um, I think that torture aside, this is a this is a key point that we're totally totally uh, taking for granted and, and almost overlooking in this country. Um, which is which is whether you whether some somebody's being tortured or whether somebody's being cancelled. The point is, is that everybody should have due process. You should be you should be heard. You should be listened to, and you should you should have your you, you should feel like you have a you have a you have a fair crack at the whip, and then a decision is made about whether you are this full, is... foul of the, full foul of the law or not. And I think that I think it's interesting that you you would. You would presumably you are are you are you sort of questioning whether these uh, these terrorists in Russia are, are actually terrorists because because they've been tortured? Is that, is that what is that sort of the point that you're making? No, okay, I'll I'll, I'll set out my stall and um, I appreciate Tom. You might not have been listening um to the to the the my sort of talk up at the start of the hour but i did i did talk about extraordinary rendition programs i did talk about cia black sites i did talk about guantanamo bay um clearly i mean the the British government would obviously deny any involvement in torture and deny any wrongdoing, but you, you read Peter Hitchens talking about waterboarding in Guantanamo Bay, um, that quote which I which I read out earlier, and which I will try to pull up now for you, um, which is essentially that, you know, um, the idea that if, if waterboarding doesn't constitute torture, then no such thing uh, can constitute torture, having experienced it himself. Um, I, don't, I don't mean to sort of only talk about the Russians. I'm not suggesting that you know um, other governments don't also commit and do horrible things. I'm talking about it because they were paraded in that courtroom uh, in front of us, and and the kind of swagger, the the bragging almost um, of the fact that they're like, yes, we did this to these people. Now I'm I'm find it interesting um, your the the sort of the argument which I would kind of I don't know if it's if it's on a technicality, but this idea that the own the problem with it is that they haven't had a trial yet. Uh, well, it's about due, pro- absolutely, it's about due process. So I mean, if they, is- okay, so if they had had a trial, would you support their torture then? If they were found guilty? Well, of course not, but, 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 okay. but, 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 tor- but torture is, if, if... Presumes uh, guilt, so, is what you're saying. Well, well, yeah, it presumes guilt, exactly that. So, so you can cut somebody's ear off, but you could also cut somebody's, cut somebody's mouth off, which is, which is what we're finding in this country, where you cannot, if you are accused of of a particular, you know, of, of a particular, you've said whatever it might be. Nobody's interested in, as to whether you've actually said it. Um, and I think that I think that I think it's quite I think it's quite poignant that you you have the Russians that just do, do it blatantly, and, and you know they've, they've, what they've done to those people is absolutely disgraceful. Yeah, it's and there's absolutely there's absolutely no excuse for it. But equally, equally some of the stuff that's gone on in our own country whereby people's people's right to reply has been totally taken away from them in in so many cases because because the court of public opinion says you're 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 guilty and i think that's a really dangerous dangerous road to find out you're not drawing an equivalence between cancel culture and torture are you absolutely how can you not? How can I not? How can you not? Well, but, but, so, 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 do, do, so do you think? Okay, that, okay, so, okay, okay. No, how how can I not? Okay, do I think there's a difference between strapping a car battery to someone's genitals and someone, people on Twitter getting angry about something that someone said? It's not about people on Twitter getting angry. No, you, you're, you're totally missing the point. If you, that, that's not the point I'm making. It, it, we we are we are we are horrified at the scenes of this this. Uh, this, this chap who's had his ear cut off and yep. has been 
paraded around the the, the courts of, of Moscow. Um, but we should also think long and hard about the people whose voices have been have been chopped off, whose whose mouths have been closed, and. Yeah, okay. Look, I, I understand the point. I, under, I think I understand the point that you're trying to make, which is about the presumption of innocence, right? And, and jumping to a conclusion about a person. And that in the way that the, you know, the, the Russian secret police um, tortured these guys before they had pled guilty to the things that they'd done, that presumed their guilt. And, and, and in, a, in an equivalent way, people rushed to conclusions about about others um, when, I don't know, in, in relation to free speech issues, let's say. But I, 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 would, I would say there is a, uh, a court is not the only arbiter of what's true, what's right, what's wrong. So in the case of criminal justice, if you're talking about finding someone guilty for a very serious crime, yes, the court is the appropriate mechanism for doing that. If, if you're talking about something about making a moral judgment about a person, no, on a, per no, no, on a personal no. level, I think it's totally fine for someone to come to a conclusion about another person based on something that they've said. You don't need that person to go into court to be decided about whether what they said was right, oh, I, right or wrong. Oh, it, 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 it was totally, it was totally, um, it was totally court, court due process. I wasn't talking about right. saying things about other people. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I just, Ollie, I, I think it's. I think. I think. By the way, apologies that um, I, I didn't quite recognise that you'd said what you'd said about the the, uh, the 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 rendition stuff earlier on in your show. Um, but 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 I do think it's very poignant that we 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 get very excited about the Russians cutting people's ears off. But we also um, we're, we're 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 quite happy to um, we're quite happy to cut people's cut people's uh, right to due process off, which is absolutely happening in this country and I think that's absolutely undeniable. Tom, thank you for your call. I, I, I would just say I don't think it is quite the same. I don't think it is quite the same. The Russians cutting that guy's ear off. No, no one's having their mouth cut off in this country, literally, are they? Um, but I understand the point. I understand the point that you're trying to make. Rose is in Croydon. Rose, good morning. Does it matter if a soldier has a beard? Uh, good morning, Ollie. Um, not particularly talking about soldiers. I just hate beards. Oh no! They're, they're ugly. They're unhygienic. Um, food gets stuck in them. Oh, I just Rose, I don't like them. Rose, <laughs> I've got yeah. a beard. Have you? Um, okay. Well, I still feel the same. I don't like them. <laughs> Have I made it worse? Whether you've got one or not, I, I just don't. My, <laughs> was my there son's a, was got there a, one. I don't like it. Do you think your son's ugly? No, my son isn't ugly, but he. Um, I, I just, his is very, very small. Um, so it's quite it, neat. It's not one of these mucky ones, you know, that you see people eating and Have getting you... food stuck in them. Oh, like Mr. Twit. Like Mr. Yeah. Mr. Twit with the beards. Have, Rose, have you had a have you had a bad experience with 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 a bearded person? Have, has, no. has, is there is there an event that's led to you to form this opinion? No, absolutely not. Um, about I wouldn't go near anybody with a beard. What I mean, it, what for, is it? What is it that concerns you about them? You think sort of food gets stuck in them and such? I, I actually think it hides somebody's good looks. Oh, okay, this is going somewhere. Yeah, well, it, it's true. I mean, I, you've got hair. Well, I, I don't know what to say. I just hate what if, them. okay. So, so what if what if what if someone has a um, a particularly weak jawline? Shall we say? Uh, perhaps one might describe them as chinless uh, and and if such such was to be the case you can kind of manufacture some angular lines on the face can't you with 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 well groomed mm. with well groomed okay, hair I, I i get that but i still would rather see that person with a clear face so what do you make of the modern trend then for for people to have beards you're not you're not a fan no i mean i would never be rude to somebody if they've oh, got that's, a beard, that, that's, that's, that's their business. <laughs> and you'd, you'd never be rude to someone apart from calling up the bearded man on the radio and telling him that he thinks that you think beards are ugly. That's not. That's certainly, um, that's certainly not rude. I, I didn't know that you had a beard, but I would have called up anyway. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, that's good to know. <laughs> Fearless. Fearless in the face of it. I'm trying to think of um, handsome gentlemen that have sported beards in the past. I mean, Brad Pitt certainly certainly rocked a beard for a period of time, hasn't he? Um, I don't think he's particularly handsome anyway that might be the most controversial take that lbc has ever heard you don't you don't think <laughs> brad pitt is that much of a handsome man 
<laughs> is there anyone that's an exception to the rule? Is there anyone you make an you make an excuse for? There is. Is there anyone with a beard that you 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 think is uh, relatively good looking? No. No one. No. <laughs> God, there's no hope. No, there isn't. <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> I, I like to see somebody's face. I mean, if somebody is hiding, um, you know, an injury or a, a big problem, then okay. But I still wouldn't like it. So, so. You think people? You think you think um, a beard is perhaps a uh, cause for suspicion? You, you, you're you're you think that someone someone with a beard like myself isn't particularly trustworthy? No, no, I don't think that. Okay, that's that's a, that's a completely different matter. I just don't like them. I've I've seen people with beards with food stuck in it, and I I just don't like them. That's just bad hygiene, though, isn't it? I mean, there's no excuse for having food stuck stuck in and around your face. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> tell me um, more. Tell me more about your son, Rose, um, who who sports a beard of which you are not a fan. Uh, mm. Have you have you broached the matter with him? Have you tried to have a conversation with him about it? Um, he knows I don't like them. Did you, did you tell him? Did you tell choice. him? Did you tell him you don't like them? <laughs> yeah, he knows that. How old but is it's he? His, it's his choice. He's thirty nine. Okay, and has he had it for a long time? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, he, his wife obviously accepts him. Well, that's good. You know, it's an, it's not really my business, but personally, well, I do not like a beard of any kind. A boy's best friend is his mother. <laughs> we like to think so. Yeah. So when when he first grew it, did you sort of stage an intervention and sit down with him and say, "Oh, I'm not not a fan of this." No. You've just, you know, it's, you've it's just his, taken it. His, um, it's, it's just quite surprising to me because you've, you've got quite strong views on the matter, clearly, but... I just don't like them. And, and you, I think we'll find that a lot of women are like, feel the same as I do. I mean, it, it's their choice. I would never say anything to anybody, yuck, I don't like your beard. But I, I, that's how I feel. Hmm. <laughs> has, it, so has it deteriorated your your relationship at all with your son? No, you you kept your feelings no, to yourself. Absolutely not. No. He, but he but he knows. Yeah, but I don't think he's bothered that I don't like them. Well, clearly, it's otherwise he wouldn't have had it for the years that he's had it. <laughs> it's his choice. It's it's his prerogative. All right, fair, fair, fair enough. Um, like I said, Rose. I mean, I have a beard, but also Sam and Aaron in the gallery both have beards as well. Um, okay. Is there is is there anything any, any sort of parting words of wisdom you'd like to sh you'd like to share with the three of us? Um, just keep them hygienic. Or, and don't, or, or don't failing that, just just shave <laughs> shave them off. Yeah. Oh, better. Yeah, even better. Yeah. This is, the unfortunate thing is, I'm kind of storing up. I'm storing up. Um, an ability to sort of uh, de-age myself, uh, I suspect probably in five to ten years' time when I start to become self-conscious about the wrinkles on my face and all the rest. Uh, and, and I plan to be able to get out of that conundrum by, by losing the beard mm. and, and okay. taking myself back down to a sort of more fresh-faced uh, appearance. Okay. It's, okay. A, it's a strategy, if anything. Okay. Okay. That's your view. That's what you, you, you think You think that's a good plan? Sorry? Do you think that's a good plan? If that's how you feel, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't think I, I don't think we're going to come to an agreement on this one, Rose. Uh, thank you for your call. Lovely to talk to you.